Good afternoon and welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting and Maritime Uses. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, the chair of this subcommittee. We're joined today by Council Members Koo, Traeger and King. Today we will be hearing a pub we will be holding a public hearing on LU 231, an application for the site selection of property located at 2050 Bartow Avenue in the Bronx for use as a full service animal shelter, veterinary clinic, and accompanying office space. However, before we commence our hearings, we will vote on two items heard at our September 17th meeting. We will vote to approve LU 220, an application submitted by the Administration for Children's Services and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, pursuant to Section 197-C of the New York City Charter for the acquisition of property located at 888 Westchester Avenue for continued use as a child care facility. The facility has been operating on this site since the early 1970s in a privately owned one-story building. The LSNNY Early Life Children's Center 2 serves up to 135 three to four year olds at this facility. The child care center is located in Chair Salamanca's district in the Bronx and he is in support of the application. We will also vote to approve LU 219, the Landmarks Preservation Commission's designation of the Borum Hill Historic District Extension. The Borum Hill Historic District Extension consists of approximately 288 buildings developed in the mid 19th century according to the LPC designation report. The extension encompasses an important commercial corridor adjacent to the Borum Hill Historic District and contains cohesive rows of buildings designed in the Greek Revival, Italianate, and other 19th century styles constructed for the working and middle class as the growth of commerce, industry, and transportation drove development in Brooklyn around the Civil War. The extension is in Council Member Levin's district and he is in support of this application. Council, please call the roll to approve LUs 219 and 220. Adams. I vote aye on all. Koo. Aye. Miller. Aye. Traeger. Aye. The vote is four in the affirmative, uh, zero in the negative, zero abstentions. And the vote is held open. We will leave the vote open. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Council Member Miller as well. We will now move on to today's hearing. Local Law 123 of 2018 requires the city to maintain a full service animal shelter in each borough by July 1st, 2024. LU 231 is an application submitted by the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and Department of Citywide Administrative Services seeking approval of a site selection to facilitate the, the development of a full service animal shelter and veterinary medical clinic with accompanying office space in the Bronx. The nonprofit contractor, Animal Care Centers of New York City, has been operating shelters and admission centers across New York City since 1994 and will also operate this shelter. The proposed site is located at Block 5141, Lot 1085 in Council Member King's District. One portion of Lot 1085 is privately owned by PHF, HDFC, and contains a senior housing building. The remainder of Lot 1085 is a city-owned is city owned and is currently being used to store trailers owned by NYPD. The city owned portion is the development site. The project is also seeking a mayoral zoning override to allow for development of an animal shelter within a C4-3 zoning district and to waive provisions of zoning resolution section 32-41 to permit a li limited number of fenced in outdoor areas for the animals. However, this application is only for the site selection. I now call on the Department of Health and Mental Health to testify on the site selection, and then we will take testimony from the public. Jeff Dupe. Julie Frayson. And Aaron Velasquez. Before yeah. you p begin, Council, please swear in the panel. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the testimony you're about to deliver and answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. I do. Please state your names for the records. Jeff Dupay. 
Julie Friesen. Aurora Velasquez. Thank you very much. You may begin. Good afternoon, Chair Adams and members of the committee, Council Member King. My name is Jeff Dupay. I'm a Deputy Commissioner in the Mayor's Community Affairs Unit. I'm joined by colleagues from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, as well as Animal Care Centers of New York City, the organization contracted by the city to run our open admission shelters. On behalf of the administration, I thank you for the opportunity to testify. We are pleased to be here today to discuss the setting of the first ever full service animal shelter in the Bronx, which will bring much needed services to a borough that has been underserved for decades. The history behind our journey here is a long one, <coughs> but, but we believe before the council is an application that can successfully achieve the objective of delivering a multi-unit animal care operation in an efficient design on the same level of nationally regarded facilities. The issue of animal welfare is a priority of this administration, one that, like the council, we are committed to addressing. I also want to take a moment to thank the City Council for its leadership on behalf of animal welfare, for its consistent and, and strong commitment to making sure our city is a fair place for animals. The mayor has a long record of supporting progressive animal welfare reforms. And during the mayor's first term, the administration has worked together with the city council to enact a variety of policies to make life better for the animals of this city and for the people who care about them. We've worked closely with the council to regulate pet shops so they only sell spayed and neutered dogs and cats, no longer sell rabbits or dogs and cats from puppy mills or kitten mills. We've required new pet shops and 24 veterinary clinics to have life-saving fire sprinklers We've also ensured that animal crimes are appropriately addressed by implementing the Animal Abuse Registry and creating NYPD's Animal Cruelty Investigation Squad. With the support of the council, we've increased the operating budget for the city's open admission animal shelters to a record level so they can save more animals and be a model to open admission shelters across the country. Finally, in 2015, the mayor announced our intention to bring full service animal shelters to all five boroughs. With the support of then Health Committee Chair, now Speaker Johnson, $1.2 million was included in the fiscal year 2016 budget to develop plans to meet animal sheltering needs of the Bronx and Queens. $59 million was then added to the capital budget to design and build the Bronx shelter. This funding was determined by the OMB Capital Project Scope Development Study performed by Mott McDonald, working with Shelter Planners of America to address the specific animal care needs of the Bronx. And just four months ago, on June 7th, after this ULERP had begun, the City Council voted unanimously to pass, the to pass a bill requiring full service shelters in all five boroughs. The mayor eagerly signed the bill with the understanding that we were already well on our way to making this law become a reality. This is what brings us here today. The selection of this Bronx site represents a multi-year process involving the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, the Department of Design and Construction, the Office of Management and Budget, and City Hall. It included a search of both private and public sites throughout the Bronx and was guided by a comprehensive set of criteria to ensure we were considering all avenues and developing sound and thoughtful proposal. We enlisted the help of Bronx residents, land use experts, and others to solicit ideas and after, and after all the work we successfully found a site that would allow us to move forward. The site in question is a city-owned property currently used for NYPD storage. It is situated along a commercial corridor among the stores of Bay Plaza Mall and across the street from the Bartow Mall Shopping Center. Having an animal, animal care center in a commercial zone will raise its profile, provide additional foot traffic for local businesses from employees and visitors, and make it easier for the residents of the Bronx to take advantage of the services being provided for the first time. Behind the Bartow Mall Shopping Center is the southern border of Co-op City. During our community engagement during the ULERP, we've heard objections to this siting from some Co-op City residents. <clears throat> They've made it clear that they would rather the site be used for a community center. We have taken these concerns to heart and have been engaging with residents to discuss how we can expand youth, adult, and senior programming as part of this land use application, and we are eager to meet the needs as part of the site selection process while addressing animal care needs of the entire Bronx and complying with the law passed by the City Council in June. 
Our work to ensure animal welfare is ongoing, and our goal is to make sure that all animals of the city of New York are treated with dignity. Thank you again for this opportunity to testify. I look forward to discussing with the council ways to continue to work for the betterment of animals in New York City while ensuring local residents' needs are also met. You will now hear from Julie Friesen, Deputy Commissioner for Administration at the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, the applicant on this ULERP, as well as Aurora Velasquez, the Chief Operating Officer of Animal Care Centers of New York City. Following Aurora's testimony, my colleagues and I will be happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Just uh, to let you know, we did not receive your written testimony, the committee. I'll send it over as soon as this is over. My apologies. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairperson Adams, Council Member King, and members of the Land Use Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. My name is Julie Friesen. I'm Deputy Commissioner of Administration at the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Thank you for the opportunity to testify here um, on our application, the department's application for site selection for a full service animal shelter at 2050 Bartow Avenue in the Bronx. The health department is charged with managing and caring for the city's population of owner surrendered, abandoned, homeless, and lost animals. In 1995, the city created a nonprofit entity, now known as Animal Care Centers, or ACC, to operate the animal shelter system. The services the health department carries out through a contract with ACC include receiving and sheltering animals, providing medical services, and animal placement. ACC also performs a vital public safety function by handling potentially dangerous animals, accepting suspected rabbit animals for observation or preparation for testing, and working with city and state agencies in wildlife management. ACC performs these services by operating full-service animal shelters in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Staten Island, admission centers in the Bronx and Queens, which transfer animals to the Manhattan and Brooklyn shelters daily, and field operations throughout the city. ACC is required to accept all animals without regard to their condition, age, temperament, or adoptability. On June 26, 2018, the mayor signed Local Law 123, which requires the health department to maintain and operate a full-service animal shelter in all five boroughs by 2024. The proposal before you today would help us meet this mandate by establishing a full-service animal shelter in the Bronx. Currently, the Bronx has only an admission center, which is too small to adequately support the current intake of animals. This new shelter will add critical capacity to the citywide system, allowing for an additional 6,000 animals to be cared for in the Bronx every year. The full service shelter will provide counseling services to help people keep their pets and provide adoption services for people to adopt new pets. This proposed project will also include an animal medical clinic, the, the first in the city's animal care system. This application is years in the making, as Jeff said. Starting in 2014, the Health Department worked closely with the Department of Citywide and Administrative Services, or DCAS, and ACC to carry out an exhaustive search to find a site in the Bronx that would accommodate all of the programmatic needs of the proposed animal shelter. We also worked with the Department of City Planning to evaluate these locations for zoning requirements. In the first round of our search, we identified and considered 21 sites that met our minimum criteria. Upon this initial review, 10 of those sites were eliminated because their lot size was too small or they were only available for lease, therefore they would not be appropriate candidates for the significant capital renovation needed to build a full service animal shelter. In the second round of our search, the 11 remaining sites were further reviewed using the following criteria. First, a city owned versus private lot. The ideal city the ideal site is a city-owned lot, preferably vacant, to avoid demolition, speed up construction, and reduce the time and cost of land acquisition. Secondly, lot size. It's critical that we identify at least an 80,000 square foot lot to accommodate all the needed functions of the project. This includes approximately 30,000 square feet of ground floor built area to avoid moving animals on elevators and minimize the spread of disease. It also requires 
external space for dog runs to facilitate animal exercise and good health, sufficient parking for clients and staff, and loading bays for animal transfers. Third, location. To reach the greatest number of potential adoption customers, the animal shelter needs to be in an easily accessible, highly visible, and well-trafficked commercial corridor, much like a retail store. And fourth, accessibility. The site should be accessible via car and public transportation, convenient to Bronx residents, and located within zoning districts where animal shelters can be as of right, such as in districts C8, M1, M2, or M3. Based on the criteria above, the 2050 Bartow Avenue site was the ideal fit for the needs of a full-service animal shelter. It is city-owned. It's currently a vacant lot being used to store NYPD police trailers. At 88,200 square feet, it is large enough to accommodate all animal shelter functions and critical, critical HVAC or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning infrastructure on a single story with plenty of space for dog runs, parking, aesthetic improvements added to the surrounding built environment. It is also accessible to Bronx residents via car, 11 bus lines, and a 15 to 20 minute walk to the subway. Finally, it is located virtually in the middle of the Co-op City Shopping Center, a busy commercial thoroughfare, which will bring foot traffic as well, to provide, as well as provide shopping and retail opportunities for the staff and visitors of the animal shelter. This last feature is key, as a highly visible location can increase animal adoption rates by 100%. As you can see by the renderings behind us here, the proposed design for the Bartow Avenue site is both aesthetically pleasing and functional. It would fit well into the mix of commercial, residential, and industrial land uses in the surrounding neighborhood. Additionally, the final design, this is a conceptual design, but the final design would be subject to community in input and approval by the Public Design Commission, and we would be pleased to work closely with the community during that process. We are looking forward to bringing this intricately designed, state-of-the-art animal shelter online to serve the 1.4 million residents of the Bronx in the near future. If this, site, if this site were not to move forward, we would begin our search again, delaying our timeline for completion by several years and well past the 2024 deadline set by this council under Local Law 123. At 2050 Bartow Avenue, we are able to serve the health and welfare of the city's abandoned and surrendered animals while providing a much needed service to residents of the Bronx. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify. I would be happy to answer questions after my colleague Aurora completes her testimony. Good afternoon, Chairperson Adams, Council Member King, and members of the Land Use Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. My name is Aurora Velasquez, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Animal Care Centers of New York City. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. ACC is grateful for the commitment of Mayor de Blasio towards ensuring the success of ACC in our shared mission to end animal homelessness in New York City through the construction of a full-service animal shelter in the Bronx. We believe the addition of an animal shelter in the Bronx will provide more services to a greater number of New York City residents looking to engage with our organization and further protect and promote the health and safety of the community and its animals. ACC was incorporated in 1995 as a 501c3 not-for-profit organization dedicated to the health and welfare of pets and people in New York City. For over 20 years, ACC has been the city's sole contractor charged with operating the existing municipal animal shelters and providing animal rescue and welfare services to all five boroughs, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Our mission is to end animal homelessness in New York City. 20 years ago, only 25% of animals entering the shelter system were placed and programs were minimal. Today, ACC is a dramatically different organization and in 2017 achieved an unprecedented placement rate of 93% for cats and dogs. We offer a full complement of services and programs that benefit not just the animals, but people and communities as well. By contract with the city, ACC operates under an open admissions model. This makes ACC unique among all other animal welfare organizations in New York City because we accept any animal brought to our five locations. Whether the animal has been abandoned, surrendered, found as a stray, brought in by the public, NYPD, or our animal rescue team, and regardless of age, health status, breed, species, temperament, or physical condition. 
We operate three city-owned full-service animal care centers located in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Staten Island, and two admission centers located in the Bronx and Queens that provide limited services to help find lost pets, take in surrendered pets, and offer surrender prevention alternatives. ACC currently employs over 250 staff across 13 departments, each with a specific role as it relates to our overall mission. We have staff at all levels of qualification, including individuals with excellent skills in animal handling, customer service, and social work, as well as advanced degrees and experience in animal welfare, veterinary and shelter medicine, and not-for-profit business. We are a national leader for open admissions shelters and have been recognized for our progressive, compassionate, life-saving approach to animal welfare. We engage over 500 active volunteers who not only support the work we do, but who also experience very real benefits as individuals on a personal level, something we hope to extend to Bronx residents through this new facility. In addition to providing basic animal services to the city of New York, we also provide many community enhancing programs, which we strive to position and deliver in a way that is responsive to the needs and wishes of the communities in which we're located. These programs aim to be inclusive and relevant to New Yorkers with varying interests and priorities. Through the Community Kids Program, ACC acts as an educational resource and an inspiration for kids and teens in New York City by providing valuable experience through the lens of working with animals. While providing meaningful enrichment to animals, programs such as Reading to Cats also helps promote literacy and comfort in public speaking for school-aged children, among other benefits. With a local state-of-the-art shelter, ACC will be able to educate and inspire many more young residents of the Bronx with the added benefit of investing their efforts into their own communities. In addition to participating in the variety of volunteer positions offered by ACC, ACC is developing specifically tailored programs for seniors. This programming will include visits to senior centers by ACC representatives with some of our easiest going animals and opportunities to assist with elements of the Community Kids Program, which will, realize, which will realize the benefits of pet therapy as well as help keep our seniors active and engaged in their communities. Through our community pet program, ACC hosts pop-up clinics throughout the Bronx, providing free vaccinations for cats and dogs as well as microchips and referrals for free spay-neuter surgeries. At these community pet clinics, ACC strives to learn more about other concerns citizens may have and connect them with resources that are offered as part of our overall program. Through this program and in partnership with local pet trainers, ACC also offers free workshops for dog owners to help create safe neighborhoods. These kinds of offerings support maintaining stable family units, inclusive of pets, which yield benefits not only to those individual families, but to their greater communities as well. All of our programs have been developed in part as a response to needs we hear within the community. ACC has been operating animal shelters in New York City neighborhoods for over 20 years. We are next to churches and schools, and we pride ourselves in developing good relationships with small businesses and neighbors. While our mission may be animal-centric, we also recognize that our activities must be positioned appropriately to serve the entire community, which is what we hope to do in the Bronx. We would plan to engage this community in particular in ensuring things like our adoption approach, our future program development and services are integrated into this community's particular needs and requirements. On behalf of everyone at Animal Care Centers of New York City, thank you for the opportunity to testify today in support of building a full service animal shelter in the Bronx. ACC welcomes the chance to expand our full, our full complement of animal and community services to the Bronx and better meet the needs of those residents. The physical layout of a state of the art <coughs> care center combined with programmatic expansion would make New York City, and in particular the Bronx, a model for animal sheltering nationwide. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, we need a copy of your testimony also. This committee did not receive it. Yes, we have it. Apologies. Thank you. Before we go to questions from the committee, I now recognize Councilmember King to offer a statement. Good afternoon, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Deputy Commissioner Frankston, I want to say thank you for your testimony today. Uh, but I will say this is a very serious conversation that we got to have for the residents in, um, of the North Bronx as well as our animal rights activists. And I take it very seriously. Um, against doctor's orders, I'm here nursing a fractured foot as well as being in the hospital to 4 o'clock this morning with my wife. So, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little sensitive right now. Um, Jeff, in a row, when you come here and you don't bring a testimony 
for us to read at the same time when you know this is part of the process. So I'm a little disappointed that as serious as these people thought the day was that you couldn't figure out how to get out your testimony to My us. My apologies. So, um, so it, it, it takes me to a different place because at the end of the day, the residents in Co-op City, the residents in the North Bronx, as I told and I put on the record that I will stand with the residents in the North Bronx and being able to make sure whatever we build on this New York City site is conducive, is pleasing, and it is also in line with what that, what that neighborhood looks like so far. I grew up with animals. I love my dogs, I love the animals, and I am not, an, no, I do not, not like animals. However, I wanna make sure that we pass the law wanting to be in compliance, and I wanna make sure we have a respectable conversation. So to everyone who is in this room, whether you love cats, dogs, fish, llamas, cows, it doesn't make a difference. At the end of the day, we gotta have the right conversation. And I'm gonna ask us to be respectful in this conversation today, because at the end of the day, whatever gets built there, whether it's how we manifest this use for animal use, senior use, youth use, whatever it is, whatever community use that we have to do, we have to be respectful towards one another. That's what today's conversation must be and has to be. And as the representative for this space, once this facility, whatever's built there, we have to deal with the traffic. We have to deal with any other things that happen in that surrounding geographical area while the activists who may not live in the area or someone who's driving from White Plains or Yonkers or someone from another borough utilizes this space. We have to deal with all that that comes with this. So I'm asking us to be really respectful and mindful regardless of our agendas that we're respectful to the other side and listening to how do we do right by the people of the North Bronx and the people of the Bronx while we comply with the law. That's what today's conversation is. This is just one of many that will happen. And I promise as, a, as an elect, elected leader with the committee that we're gonna have the right conversation. So I, emotions are gonna fly today. But I'm asking as we fly our emotions in there that we're respectful to the next person because in order for us to make this work, there has to be some give and take. And I will again put on the record if we can't figure out a meaning for a give and take, I have no choice as the representative of this location to be with the residents who live in the location. So I'm asking us to be mindful, respectful, and feel like figure out how do we formulate a plan that we comply with the law as well as building on the space, whether it's implementing some animal use, and I've suggested some things with some animal use to give some alterations of how do we make this spot make sense, as well as providing services for our youth and our seniors that everyone can welcome, not one side loses, one side wins. It has to be a total commitment by everyone who's sitting at the table, whether we all live in the North Bronx as I do, or you are activists who don't live in the neighborhood and you just fight because you're then to say, I gotta fight for it. So I want us to be, have, have the right conversation and be on the right side of right. And if we can do that, at the end of this process, we've complied with the law and everyone can walk away and say, we did right by the residents of the Bronx. Madam Chair, I thank you for this time today. I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member King. Thank you. Uh, just a question, how engaged has the community been in the process so far, just for clarity? Uh, as Thank you for the question. As part of the ULIP process, we've uh, had a, countless conversations with residents of the Bronx, residents of Co-op City, uh, with the community board. Um, it, it's been a fairly extensive conversation. Has this been over a number of years, months? When did, when did these conversations around this matter happen? We've been talking to residents of the Bronx about their interest in having a full service animal shelter for many, many years now. Um, as we went through the process of looking for a site that would be suitable for this, uh, as Julie mentioned, we started out with 21 sites, narrowed it down, narrowed it down further. Once we landed on this site and registered the ULERP, we started the conversations with the, the local community uh, in, in sort of full swing. You mentioned the community board. I'm a past chairperson of a community board. Was this brought in a community board meeting? Was there input from the community board? Uh, I testified at the land use subcommittee uh, at the community board. Um, they, they opened it up for some limited uh, comments there. Had a lot of conversations in the hall as well. Uh, and then also at the full community board um, uh, where they actually shot down uh, testimony after, after a handful of people. Um, 
<coughs> so we we did engage with the community board on two different occasions that was a packed room um, and ultimately the community board uh, voted it down uh, how long ago was that how long ago was that uh, I don't have the the date of that in front of me I can follow was it three months ago four months ago was it hot there outside about. was it yeah. cold outside no, it was very hot that day very hot yes, okay um, inside and outside it, yes, inside and outside. It was uh, part of the, the ULERT process when that happened. Okay, thank you very much. Committee, are there any questions? Councilmember? Councilmember Miller? <clears throat> so, what, what I, good, good afternoon to everyone, uh, certainly to the panel and those from, uh, from the community and otherwise that have taken their time to come this afternoon. Um, and, and certainly this is important to everyone. As, as you know, the council, this body had voted to ensure that uh, each borough is represented in terms of animal shelter. And, and by the way, we don't have one in Queens. Um, that being said, as, as it pertains to this particular location here, what are the possibilities um, for a mixed use venture for these 88,000 square feet at, at this location? Thank you for the question. That's something that we uh, explored early on uh, when we were looking at sites and thought, what else can we do with this site? Um, so zooming out a little bit, uh, we worked with, uh, with experts in shelter planning and they made it abundantly clear to us that uh, in an ideal world, we would have much, a much, much larger property than what we were able to find in this site. Uh, this was the largest suitable site that we were able to find. One of the reasons that they want larger sites is because it's, uh, it's crucial for, uh, to have all of the animals on one floor, uh, and that's to prevent disease, um, as well as other uh, reasons that Julie can expand on in a moment. Um, uh, and then we added a second floor for administrative purposes for the shelter itself, uh, and then also plan to move the, uh, the corporate headquarters for ACC to that site as well. If we added a third floor to it, uh, not only would it increase the cost uh, dramatically, um, uh, the DDC estimate is about $10 million, uh, it would require additional parking, which would then shrink the footprint and make us need to put animals on the second floor and sort of shift everything up from there. Uh, if we added a fourth floor to it, uh, we would then be required to build a parking garage, which would further shift the, the footprint upward. So we, we looked at it extensively, and these are sort of uh, sort of intricacies that... Uh, so, so my question, again, was mixed use as relates to community benefits and not necessarily whether or not that's having an administrative aspect uh, attached to this bricks and mortars wouldn't constitute mixed use. Right. right. So I, I wanted to know whether or not there was an opportunity for um, outside of the shelter. And I'm certainly not saying that uh, having the animal shelter and potentially educational component attached to it is not a community benefit, but a community benefit that uh, perhaps had been agreed upon by the community itself. Is there, is there, so certainly you've taken into consideration models, not just locally, but nationally, are, are, are there models anywhere throughout the country where there are mixed use facilities? I'd like to answer that two different ways. Um, our intention to build a full service animal, a state of the art, full service animal shelter in the Bronx uh, is following models in other areas. Other areas have dedicated uh, full service animal shelters. I'm not aware, and Aurora, maybe you could uh, chime in if you if you have the answer. But uh, I'm not aware of any uh, full service animal shelters in other municipalities that have different community programming. However, uh, it's important that people understand that the services that will be provided by ACC, uh, as Aurora mentioned, while animal focused, won't solely be for the animals. Uh, there's a variety of community programs right now that exist within ACC, and after engaging in communications with, uh, in conversations with community members, we've heard loud and clear from them that they have an interest in additional community programming. So in talking to the council, council member King, uh, he asked what else could we do to expand uh, sort of educational purposes at this site um, and had a variety of suggestions as he mentioned. Uh, so that's something that we, we took to heart and have dug into uh, 
very rapidly uh, and have um, a sort of suite of ideas, uh, and that's you know an ongoing conversation that, that we need to have uh, sort of offline and with the community. Uh, we're also looking for other ways to expand community programming um, on or around uh, Co-op City. Uh, so uh, we've been talking to residents of Co-op City about that. As recently as Friday night, I was, I was up in Co-op City meeting re with residents, talking about some specifics, hearing ideas from people about what their vision was for this. Um, as we see with all New Yorkers, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about what they want. And it is our interest. You know, I mean, we are, we're very committed to making sure that the, the needs that have been vocalized from the, the local residents are met as part of this land use application. And finally, um, I, I know that the, uh, you were looking for a space that, that, that required somewhere in the area of 80,000 square feet. Is that consistent with the other boroughs, shelters that you have in the outer boroughs as well? Or is this a uh, kind of a, a new state of the art, adding some, some programming that don't exist in the other? And if so, what, what, what does that look like? So um, thank you for the, the question. Let me start off and then I'll hand it over to, to Julie to answer. Um, the current state of animal shelters uh, in other boroughs is far from ideal, uh, which is why we're undertaking a wholesale improvement of the animal shelter system. Uh, you'll hear from advocates later today who aren't happy with, with the state of affairs. Uh, and the reality is that ACC has done absolutely incredible work with subpar facilities. Uh, reaching 93% live release rate is unprecedented. And these are in facilities that are not built to be animal shelters. Uh, one used to be a factory, I think. I, I don't know what the others were, but they, they started out in an era that they truly were the pound, right? Uh, animals were swept off the streets, uh, waited for a few days, and then put to sleep. That's not the case anymore. These really are vibrant places now. And the, the shelter that we're planning in the Bronx is going to be uh, the, the shining gem of the shelter system. It, it is going to be a world-class facility and we're very excited about bringing that to the 1.4 million residents of the Bronx. If I could just add to that, just uh, what Jeff said is right, it would be larger than the shelters in Manhattan and Brooklyn currently. And as Jeff said, those were both kind of retrofitted into old warehouse kind of factory buildings. This would be the first and only shelter in, in the city that would be purpose built with four different areas. They're the only one with uh, a veterinary clinic facility, as well as, you know, a separate adoption area, community education area, and administrative area. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for your insight. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Koo, did you have questions? Okay, Council Member King. Uh, I'm, I'll be brief because we've met, we sat down, and we spoke, we've talked, and we'll continue to talk, and we'll continue to figure out how do we develop on this space, whether it was an animal shelter or is a reduced form of what we're looking at today. But I want to know for the record, um, Councilman Miller asked about what does this shelter compare to as across the city and across the United States. Uh, the question would be why so large? So um, because the, we'd like to keep the animals on one level. And so we would need a site that's that large to be able to do that to accommodate the, uh, the volume that we expect, which is based on a census and analysis that was done by uh, our consultant. Okay, so I'll, I'll end with this. I would ask as we continue to have more conversations because um, I heard testimony of making sure that we had enough administrative and office space. So if we're gonna figure out how to navigate this location, if we're designing it basically, whether it's a llama or a cow or it's a stingray or a dog and a cat, maybe we might consider um, downsizing some of the human component so we can make sure that we have that type of animal component if we're really interested in trying to make it work as opposed to making sure we got enough space for the human being. If we want to feed animals in here, and I'm talking about it different, not just the regular pit bull, pit bull and, and a meow meow, we got to think differently. So I'm asking us to continue to look at this project differently because mm -hmm. again, the residents here who live in the neighborhood have a problem with an animal shelter. 
Right. So we need to make sure whatever we do to comply with the law does not violate the thinking, the feeling, and the existence of the residents who live across from Bartow Avenue. Thank you. Understood. Thank, Thank you, Council Member. Just to, to follow up on that, I, I want to reiterate that um, we've taken to heart your, your suggestions and have uh, a, a, a suite of suggestions about how we could um, increase the educational components and increase community use in that space as well. Excited to share that with you. Okay, I'd like to thank the panel very much for your testimony today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we know that we have a lot of members of the public who wish to testify on these items. So we're going to call up. We're going to call up members of the public. Before we do that, we'd just like to remind everyone who would like to testify today. There are a large number of you who want to testify today. You will be on a two-minute clock. We will hold you to those two minutes. We're looking right now at over 55 people that want to testify. We're going to call up Vivian Burris, Jason Miller, Cedric Fergus, Michelle Marbury. Before we begin, I'd like to mention we have been joined by Council Member Barron. Thank you. Thank you. And the vote is still open, Council Member Barron. Yeah. For items uh, LU 219 and 220, Council Member Barron. I vote aye. The items are approved by a vote of five in the major five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, and recommended to the full land use committee. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you all for being here today. Will you please state your names for the record? Vivian Burris. Jason Miller. Cedric Fergus. Thank you very much. You may begin. Um, I'm actually a little surprised to be up first. I thought I had signed up last, but OK. Um, Good afternoon, Council. I just wanted to say that uh, while many people here are going to be bringing up their opposition, uh, I want to say that I, I come not only to talk about opposition to this particular site for this animal shelter, but to also uh, hopefully bring or air out a possible alternative that I have heard mentioned in a hearing that we had in our community. I heard it was mentioned at the borough president hearing but I have not really heard any formal discussion on it. Um, and that property is actually the Baychester Square property. Uh, Councilman King is familiar with that, yes. Um, the, that particular property is actually on the west side of I-95, just opposite our location. Uh, up until last year, it was uh, under proposal for development as a shopping center and senior housing. Uh, your council actually voted along with Councilman King not to use that site. Uh, so before I make my observations, let me just confirm, uh, was that site still, or did the sale go through to the property owners that they were going to sell to, the private developer they were going to sell it to? The MTA is still responsible for managing that site, so we're in conversations to figure out how to utilize that best. And I do recommend and support if we can develop the site in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, the animal shelter may be a good location for it. Doesn't offend anyone in Co-op City. Okay. That said, that said, then let me just say, um, I had always heard that that site was being managed by the MTA, so assumed as a community member that the site itself was owned by the state. However, uh, in poking around on the internet, I came across something from the Mayor's Office of Environmental Coordination when you were originally uh, discussing what to do with that site. 
And what I found out was, and it says here, and I'm reading directly from it, the disposition of the project site was a surplus property leased to the Metropolitan Transit Authority, uh, but it's owned by the city of New York. So I understand that it probably didn't make the short list when the city was originally looking for properties for the animal shelter because it was you know, formally being looked at uh, to develop commercially. But now that that proposal has been eliminated, why not consider that site for the animal shelter? We're going to have to wrap up I right understand. there. We will take everything that you said into consideration. Thank you so much. May I ask, I didn't, wasn't aware that we could put in written statements, so can I submit one after this hearing? Most definitely. Thank you. And fine. Um, it does need to be submitted within 72 hours. Very good. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason Miller, uh, Co-op City resident, um, also a former employee of Animal Control and current employee of uh, the Mall at Baychester. I have come on their behalf somewhat. Um, I just wanted to bring up the fact that um, ACC and the Department of Health has not reached out to Bay Plaza. In fact, they did not know that the, mall, that the shelter was even being put near their property. As a result, I have explained the situation to them, and they do not feel comfortable with the fact that there will be an active shelter in which um, they have to provide security, as well as provide a um, combination of uh, preventing traffic jams and other situations. Um, I would ask if the council could please um, speak with them, as well as um, have ACC or Department of Health talk to them. Uh, we would really appreciate that. Um, I would also like to express safety concerns as I have actually worked with um, ACC for years and have experienced this myself. Um, these anim um, animals that are sometimes brought to us are not always brought in the best conditions or the best mindset. They're scared, they're trying to run away sometimes, and sometimes the owners don't provide proper um, care for that, uh, proper handling for them, and if an animal does get loose, it runs into the, um, into the mall or into the co-op city area. And ACC, unless the animal is providing, uh, is causing some problems, they will not physically go out there to get the animal. That will have to be the police's issue. Um, also, um, they do not uh, take care of, um, poop and other stuff that animals leave behind, that would be for the grounds department and they don't feel comfortable with that either. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, hi, I'm Cedric Fergus and um, I have a couple of points to, to make too. The two people did a very good job. I'm, I'm concerned about the location because the, there's a lot of traffic on Broadway Avenue, a lot of traffic. Also the train is very far away um, the bus service service lines there are very cha chaotic. Um, this the location is the problem, not the idea of a shelter. And the MTA area is a great idea, good location. Also worry about the kids. There's a couple of schools around the area, the senior citizens. Uh, there's a lot in Co-op City. Um, that's the issue also, we're concerned about the animals getting loose. Um, it's also in a mall. It's right next to Red, Red Lobster. And next, in between a lobster and um, a, a nursing home. So that kind of makes no sense to have a shelter there. Think about it, it's a community. And Culp City doesn't have animals in there. Anyway, we have service dogs, but not animals. So it's not a good location for animals. Um, one good place would probably be South Park, I mean, on Soundview, or maybe the South Bronx, because there's a lot of animals in those areas. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, panel. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. My name is Michelle Marbury, and I am a 47-year resident of Co-op City. I was a child when we moved there, and now I'm an elder. And uh, the first thing that comes to mind is when uh, Councilman King spoke and said that uh, we, had, we need to adhere to the law. Um, I, I keep thinking of the size and the span of this, of this shelter. 
and if and and also the location uh, the the I think the law states that it's supposed to be centrally located. Uh, Co-op City is the very northeast tip of the Bronx. Uh, you spit and you're in well in, in Westchester. So um, there are so many other more centrally located areas that can be utilized for this project. Um, that's that's my first point. The second is the changing, uh, the, the members of the ACC talked a lot about the changing image of the ACC and state of the art and, and this and that and what have you. But that has nothing to do with the needs of Co-op City and its residents. Um, I have nothing against animals, but I am for uh, bridging the gap between our elders and our youth, which must be, which must come come first. We are the people who live there. And like I say, I'm an elder now, and, and the children coming up behind us who are our future is who we are thinking about. Um, uh, as I said, my generation were kids when we moved in Co-op City. Now we're seniors. We're part of the largest naturally occurring senior community in the city, and our children and grandchildren deserve what we proposed over 20 years ago. Uh, not a, a, a state-of-the-art facility uh, for animals, but a state-of-the-art facility for our youth and elders to progress forward and coexist with what is ours to help govern. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, panel, for your testimony today. Thank you. Calling up the next panel, Mary Rose Borda, Brian Shapiro, Michelle Villagomez, Mindy Fortin, Fortin, and Isadora Martinez. Please step up. Thank you. Good afternoon, panel. Please state your name for the record. Michelle Villagomez. Martinez. Mary Rose Borda. Mindy Fortin. You may begin. Please remember to turn the microphones on prior to speaking. Thank you very much. You may begin. Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Villagomez, New York City Legislative Senior Director with the ASPCA. I'm going to skip through my testimony. I've submitted a copy for the sake of time, but the ASPCA has long advocated for full service animal shelters in all five boroughs. Um, combined with funding for the development and renovation of full service animal shelters, the plan to build a state of the art animal shelter in the Bronx at the 2050 Bartow Avenue location, it is clear that New York City is increasing its commitment to protecting the lives of its at risk animals. Nearly the entire city council agreed and supported legislation and dedicated funds to build and operate shelters in all five boroughs. Building a full service shelter in the Bronx will alleviate overcrowding in existing shelters, increase opportunities for people to adopt animals, opportunities to reunite lost pets and their owners, decrease the number of dogs and cats euthanized, as well as enable animal care centers of New York City to save more lives and prevent animal suffering. The ASPCA has recognized that the people of the Bronx need access to the types of services a full service animal shelter would provide to the borough's pets and people. In 2017, the ASPCA performed 8,900 spay neuter surgeries and treated 986 patients at our primary pet clinic in the Bronx. To date this year, we have performed over 7,000 spay neuter surgeries and have seen 2,600 patients at our primary pet clinic. These figures show that there is a clear need for animal welfare services in the borough. This lack of a key resource has shortchanged taxpayers for far too long, depriving them of a basic municipal service in their own community. Um, the proof of ACC's effectiveness is in its numbers. As was mentioned, um, they have a 93% um, placement rate, and they've been focusing on pet retention. In 2017, the shelter system was able to keep over 2,500 pets with their families. We've partnered with ACC on virtually every program, and we find that its leadership is steadfastly committed to helping pet no owners access care and ensuring that New York City animals leave better, lead better lives. Um, 
We will continue to work with ACC, the Department of Health, the Council, and the rescue community in hopes of creating a more humane New York City. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council. My name is Isadora Martinez. I am a coordinator with the community engagement team at the ASPCA. A big component of the work that we do is casework. We provide free services for pet owners in all five boroughs um, in effort to improve animal, their animals' welfare and living conditions. Currently, our program has a very, very uh, strong focus in the Bronx as it continues to be a very highly underserved um, area and that translates from human services as well as pet services. Pet owners uh, don't have access to doggy daycares and other services that are needed to maintain their animals healthy and happy in the home, and that's something that we provide. Um, currently in the South Bronx and doing outreach, we have worked with clients that are in the process of being evicted as gentrification um, is pretty widespread in the Bronx. Um, in many cases, they don't have the option to take their animals with them, and as a result, they are forced to leave their animals behind, which has legal repercussions. A lot of these cases can be avoided um, if there's an ACC in the Bronx, excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, I am an employee of the ASPCA, but I'm also a resident of the Bronx. I am currently living in the Longwood area of the South Bronx. Uh, a lot of my pet owner, my neighbors that are pet owners are elders that are living on fixed incomes um, and would benefit from the food pantry services that are offered at ACC. In general, ACC, um, an ACC shelter at the Bronx can be a resource to the community where people of all ages, including children, grandchildren, um, anybody who is interested in having exposure to the animal welfare field can have with, thank you. Good, Good afternoon, Council. My name is Mary Rose Borda. I'm a volunteer with the Humane Society of the United States. And well, when this came up, I started thinking and I said, well, you know, we're in a civilized city how is it that in a civilized city like New York, not one shelter for each of its five boroughs? The Bronx has almost 1.5 million residents, yet not one shelter. Bronx families already have access to daycare, senior centers, hospitals, schools, low-income housing, condos, and co-ops, but nothing for families that include four-legged members. It's wrong to keep excluding these families from their own borough. This animal shelter would be more than just for the animals. It would also provide over 100 jobs for Bronx residents, as well as volunteer opportunities for youth and senior citizens. Many of uh, studies out there have shown that there's a huge positive impact when working with animals. So this would be something that would be quite beneficial to our young, our youth, and our seniors. It's time to take care of each and every citizen in our civilized city of New York. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Mindy Fortin. I am a volunteer at the ASPCA. Animals often get placed uh, either through adoptions, free adoptions, or um, through intake of strays in very low income areas, um, situations. On behalf of the animals who have no voice and the guardian who gets so much benefit out of having a pet as a companion, it is critical to both to have easy, accessible, low cost resources in the Bronx for any reason, but especially for animal-related medical and behavioral issues. It is imperative for people in the Bronx community that we, keep, that we allow them to keep their pets healthy, cared for, and so that their pets can continue to be in loving homes and the guardians get just as much, if not more, out of having a loving pet. 
uh, only by having a low cost resource for veterinarian, shelter, and adoption pre and post services can we hope to achieve a safe, happy, and healthy community for humans, pets, and strays. It's heartbreaking when people have, guardians have to surrender their pets because they don't have these resources. It's heartbreaking. And it is very important to their mental health and physical health to be able to keep them. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have one person from the Bronx. Anyone else on this panel from the Bronx or Co-op City? Just the, okay. Thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate your testimony. The next panel, Florence Williams. Okay, sorry, it's okay. Thank you. Please state your name. Thank you so much. My name is Brian Shapiro. Chairperson Adams and council members, thank you very much. My name is Brian Shapiro, New York State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. I'm speaking today on behalf of our members and supporters in New York City and Bronx County. The HSUS enthusiastically supports the full service animal shelter at the designated Bartow Avenue location. Our organization receives dozens of calls and emails every year from residents of the Bronx seeking information and assistance with animal care related issues. There's a dire need for animal care services in this historically underserved borough. All New Yorkers deserve and are legally entitled to equal access to animal care services as the current Bronx Resource Center on East Fordham Road does not meet the needs of the community. Following a thorough review, the City Planning Commission through the ULERP has found that the proposed shelter and adoption center would not have a significant environmental impact. And of course, as you know, that also takes into account social and human factors as well. Failure to support the CPC's recommendation will leave this project in limbo for years this is something that the residents of the Bronx cannot afford. There's a dire need for a pet food pantry, low cost vet clinic, dog training, surrender prevention counseling, and other essential community services the proposed modern state of the art facility would provide. The Humane Society of the United States and our members and supporters in the Bronx respectfully urge the city council and speaker and members of this body, body to vote in favor of the proposed location uh, at Bartow Avenue. And I will simply share a personal observation. I was the executive director of the county's animal shelter in Ulster County in Kingston, New York for many years. And I did find that it was a benefit to the community. I think a council member uh, King spoke very well to that issue and my own observations are that it does benefit members of the community and the good people from Co-op City who are here today. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much for your testimony. Okay, we're gonna continue on with the next panel. Florence Williams, Bernard Silic, Silic, Dr. Alvin Ponder, and Hattie Overman. Please come up. Okay, as a reminder, you have two minutes on the clock. Thank you for coming in today. You may begin. Uh, 
Hi, good afternoon. My name is Florence Williams. I'm a resident of Co-op City in the Bronx. We in Co-op City are not against an animal shelter in the Bronx. I agree it is much needed. However, the location that you're proposing is not appropriate for the area. We are a community of over 55,000 residents. Bes besides the residents that come in daily, the place is really congested. Even crossing the street is difficult. The area at the Baychester Square would be a larger lot. You could build out instead of up, and you could have a lot more space to accommodate your animal shelter. As far as the buses are concerned, I need to know the numbers of the 11 buses because I'm not aware there are 11 buses running in and out of Co-op City. And also, um, the first time that we were told about an animal shelter was at the community board meeting in May, and then we had another one in June where they told us that there was no B plan, that that's the final site, and that was it. Bernard Silage, Vice President of River Corporation. Uh, first, uh, let me commend the, uh, the council for adopting the resolution to create these uh, five uh, shelters, animal shelters. Is there an equivalent program to build community centers throughout our city? I want to remind the council that during the, the height of depression, 11 major Community centers and swimming pools were built in the city of New York. And today we're haggling over one community center to serve our residents. We are now celebrating our 50th anniversary of the existence of Co-op City. Yet all these years we've been battling for, demanding that we get a community center from the city of New York. Now I want to remind the council that in early 2000, there was actually a bill adopted by the council appropriating $7 million for a community center precisely on this property. We don't know what happened to it. It went down the tube, evidently. Somebody dropped the ball on it. We have 8,000 young people, 19,000 seniors. Yet we're haggling over a piece of property that should be out rightfully serving the community. Now, we're not opposed to animal shelters as all our fellow members Co-op City indicated. But why, what is the problem of building the animal shelter in an abandoned golf range that's tw twice as big as the one property we talk about? And yet, we learned tonight that it's actually city-owned. Why is the Planning Commission provoking a battle between two, two groups of people who should be working together against Trump? Instead, we're fighting each other on a piece of property. It's this, it's about, it's, it's this, it's indecent. It's indecent. And it doesn't give credit to the council, nor to Mayor de Blasio. Thank we have to come much. with a compromise, and a compromise is, yes, we need that for a community center, and yes, let's build a cannibal center at the former golf range. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Alvin Ponder. I am a longtime resident of Co-op City and a member of Bronx Community Board Number 10. As a resident, I am here today to testify in opposition to the city siting of the animal shelter at 2050 Bartow Avenue. City law requires an animal shelter in each of the five boroughs in New York City. To date, both the Bronx and Queens have no ACC animal shelters for homeless, stray, abandoned, or unwanted animals. The Bronx is the, is the borough most populated with stray dogs and cats, and the dire need for an animal shelter is without question. But the decision which puts an animal shelter ahead of people is perplexing. Co-op city residents have long hoped the city would devote the lot of 2050 Bartow Avenue to a community center for the youth and senior citizens. The first requirement of an animal shelter should be that the community has to agree to it. In this case, Co-op City does not agree. Instead of placing the Bronx Animal Shelter far away from everything in an isolated area, the city plans to build on a lot in a mall in the setting of a restaurant and senior citizen facility in Co-op City. The site selection 
group should be seeking an isolated area or industrial area like the one in Brooklyn, where people can walk the dogs outside to exercise without bothering everybody. Potential barking of dogs being exercised is a great concern to Co-op City seniors. Additionally, there is no evidence that the businesses in Bay Plaza Mall welcome the animal shelter. I myself stand on the principle of the greatest good for the greatest number. We're urging that people needs be given this space with no malice to our four-footed fellow creatures. Let this space become a social benefit for everyone living in Co-op City. Thus, I ask the city to seek other sites in the Bronx. The city can do better. All right. Good afternoon. I am reading this uh, statement on the behalf. My name, first of all, my name is Hattie Overman, and I'm from Co-op City, and I'm reading this statement on the behalf of Rod Saunders, a second vice president of the River Bay Board of Directors of Co-op City. Okay. He says, I want to, dear council member, I want to submit my written objection to the proposal by the city of New York to build a 47,000 square foot structure that will house an animal shelter across the street from Co-op City. Co-op City is a no pets policy except for service animal. Only on May the 24th, 2018 meeting at the community board 10, we first found out about this proposal to build an animal shelter, only then. Uh, with buses being the only means of tra uh, public transportation in Co-op City, this animal care center will serve only to increase the uh, traffic congestion that we have. We have over 8,000 children, youth in our community, and therefore a uh, community center would be best served in this location. We also had our, our colleague, uh, Councilman Andy King wrote a letter in opposition, as well as the New York State Assemblyman Michael Benedetta, our State Senator Jamel Bailey, and U.S. Elliot Inger. But what's most important here is respectfully submitted are copies of zoning map 4A and section 25 of the zoning resolution, indicating that the proposed property falls within C4-3 zoning district, and that the intended use animal shelter is permitted only within a C8 zoning district, and is therefore out of compliance. Um, and so we are, he has, is stating that, um, okay, and I will be turning this document in to you. Thank you very much. Just for clarification, the application is for zoning override, so it would be in compliance. Thank you all for your testimony today. Thank you. Okay, the next panel is Heather Greenhouse, Joyce Friedman, Diana Vogel, and Christina Gieses. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Heather Greenhouse. I'm on the board of directors of Voters for Animal Rights. I'm here to urge you to approve the Bartow location of the Bronx Animal Shelter. Um, I truly believe this shelter will benefit the community in so many ways. It's, um, in fact, it is a community center because it will provide so many volunteer opportunities for the community. Um, but in addition, it will save thousands of animals' lives and also um, <coughs> will uh, provide pet owners in the Bronx with services that they're currently lacking, such as low-cost vet uh, for vaccinations, wellness checks, bay neuter clinic, pet food bank, free dog training, and pet surrender prevention counseling. Um, <clears throat> the community really truly will benefit from this in so many ways. Um, the opposition will have you believe that they want to build some other community center here, such as a youth center, but the truth is that a youth center was already voted against by River Bay. There will never be a community center here. In all the years, the site remains vacant because corporate interests want this site for condos. That's it. 
Council member Andy King is representing them and he is misleading the community to oppose this animal shelter on false pretenses. He's purposely hiding the benefits it will provide to the community for selfish corporate profits. River Bay has even put flyers up advertising for a bus for people to come here and oppose this shelter. <clears throat> but where was the bus for people to come here from the community to support the shelter? There are many in the community who do support this shelter and they're not being fairly represented. Um, they're telling the community such lies that, as dogs are going to escape and attack you. This has never happened at any other ACC location and it will not happen here. Um, we are here simply because we do want what's best for the community and for animals. We have nothing to gain, no money. The opposition has profits at stake and the power to manipulate and deceive these residents to further their profit-driven agenda. The bottom line is the Bronx won't have a shelter by 2024 if we do not approve this location. Thank you. It's an ideal location that was scouted by Thank the you. for three years. Okay. Yes. Good afternoon, Chairperson Adams, Council Member King, and community members. My name is Joyce Friedman. I'm on the Board of Directors for Voters for Animal Rights. I am also a long-term social worker and professional in the animal field. Relevant to this discussion, I'm a manager of the former Safety Net Helpline and New York City Pet Surrender Prevention Program, which assisted over 10,000 people with resources they needed to care for their pets. You may hear those who oppose this shelter location say that we must put people ahead of animals. Please don't accept this inaccurate framing of the issue. The Full Service Center will provide a multitude of services to Bronx residents, thereby helping people and the animals they love. It's not either or. Let me explain. I'm testifying in support of this location because if the location is denied, this will hurt many thousands of people in the Bronx. And I know this because for the seven years I managed the Safety Net Helpline, we received thousands of requests from pet owners in need of free and low-cost resources, and a very significant portion of these calls were from Bronx families who were desperate not to give up their beloved pets while struggling through a crisis. One of these callers was an elderly woman named Sharice. She lived alone with her 10-year-old beloved dog, Petunia, who was her only companion. When Petunia got an infected paw, Sharice was unable to afford vet care or travel to a vet. Because Petunia was in pain, she also started nipping, and while Sharice know that, knew that she didn't mean it, she was getting worried how to handle all this. Our program, which no longer exists now, provided her with a low-cost vet, transport to the vet, and a free dog trainer to address the nipping. When Petunia the dog was back to normal, Sharice told us in tears she had thought she had to give up her companion and was terrified of how lonely and depressed she would become. I can share hundreds of Sharice type stories which demonstrate the lack of pet services that lead to the otherwise unnecessary surrender of beloved pets. This shelter will provide these very services to the thousands of Sharices in the Bronx who are not necessarily sitting here today, who will benefit from this shelter's pet food bank and other services people have already mentioned. Please support this shelter for the community, both humans and pets. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Diana Vogel and I am a member of Voters for Animal Rights. I am reading this statement on behalf of the Board of Directors of Voters for Animal Rights. Voters for Animal Rights represents more than 60,000 supporters in New York City. Our Board of Directors and Advisory Board represents a cross-section of current and former staffers of numerous animal welfare organizations and experienced local rescuers of cats, dogs, rabbits, birds, and reptiles. Voters for Animal Rights enthusiastically supports the construction of the city-mandated full-service Bronx Animal Shelter at the chosen location of Bartow Avenue. We are extremely concerned if this location is not approved. The delay of many years before another suitable location is found and approved will needlessly cause a housing shortage for thousands of dogs, cats, rabbits, birds, reptiles, and other animals, and will cause tremendous heartache to Bronx families who are so in need of pet support services which this modern, expertly designed animal shelter would provide. What is truly disturbing is that the real estate interests who are opposing this wonderful community-oriented animal shelter are completely misleading co-op city residents and being insincere when they tell them such falsehoods such as, all the pit bulls will escape the shelter. Never has this absurdity happened at other ACC locations. And that the alternative will be a youth center. The alternative will be condos instead of programs youth and seniors can enjoy, such as those at the animal shelter. As well, the frequently uttered statement that Co-op City has a no pet policy except for service animals is irrelevant. Residents can still volunteer at the shelter and other local Bronx residents can adopt. 
Co-op City and Bronx residents and all involved need to know the truth, that the opposition to the shelter are purely profit-driven, deceptive, and do not have the community's best interests at heart. In order to meet the mandate of a Bronx and Queens full-service animal shelter by 2024, we need to get moving on this Bartow Avenue location. Homeless animals and Bronx pet owners cannot wait another several years, with a sure risk that there will not even be a completed shelter by the mandated 2024. Please approve the Bartow Avenue location for the modern state-of-the-art full-service Bronx Animal Shelter. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairperson Adams and Council Members. My name is Christina Desis, and I've been a New York City resident for 32 years of my life. I'm also a board member of Voters for Animal Rights and an animal welfare professional who works and has worked with some of the largest animal organizations in the city. I first want to start by thanking the committee for allowing the public to be a part of this process and hearing our voices. I do want to say this isn't about putting animals before people. This is about building a center that would be of service to both animals and people. As someone who has worked in the South Bronx directly with community members and their animals, I know there is a great need for an animal shelter in this area. My work was focused in this area because statistically there is a pet desert with an enormous need for services such as spay and neuter, pet surrender prevention, and pet resources. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there is one vet to every 89 dogs in the borough of the Bronx. Manhattan and Brooklyn are two of ACC's locations, and in those areas of New York City, there is an astronomical difference. Manhattan has one veterinarian per 20 dogs, and very similarly, Brooklyn has one vet to every 31 dogs. I think this paints a very clear picture. I know the shelter will become a safe haven for Bronx residents who don't know where to turn with their animals when they put a roadblock with their animals medically and behaviorally, and then on a personal level as well. I know that a shelter in this location can alleviate the community cat epidemic. I know this shelter will save thousands of animals' lives. The city needs this proposed shelter, and we need it now. Voting no today will delay this shelter from moving forward, leaving Bronx community residents stranded and the countless New York City animals in their homes and in the streets. I respectfully urge you today to vote yes to proposal site 2050 Bartow Avenue for Animal Care Center's full-service animal shelter and veterinary clinic. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony and your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, hold on, please. We do have a question. I just have one question for, and thank you for your communications today, as well as all the animal activists. I just like for you to think and ask and answer the question, whether you can answer it now. Answer. There has been a conversation about not not just building an animal shelter on the site, but a proposal that the MTA, the city site that's managed by the MTA, that could be a possible suggestion that it doesn't quote unquote infringes on the residents who live in Co-op City. How come I haven't heard any conversation of maybe looking at this alternative as opposed to saying that everyone's having a trickery conversation on this location? We know that the city took three years to choose this site and over they looked at over 50 sites and this is the one that they chose and I have faith that all of the criteria that they used to choose this site were met. Um, I mean, there were people from the mayor's office earlier and the Department of Health who explained this. No, no, that's not my, my question. Is how come there hasn't been any advocacy to ever look at a new location, the site, the golf course that's free and vacant, that is not imposing on any of the residents on Co-op City? Has this I'm city asking, yeah, it's been, it's been suggested to the city, so I'm asking, you all have been a part of these conversations, so I'm asking, how come no one's ever looked at this site and said, hey, this could be a possible site, and then now we're not having a fight with the residents who live across the street from where this first proposal. That's my question. But there will be residents who live near that other site who will also have problems with it. No? Uh, okay, so I won't go into a debate with you, but across from the MTA site is a strip mall. It's so, but that's okay. You gave me your answer. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you for the question. Um, my understanding is, sort of repeating what Heather said, is um, we were told by the mayor's office and the Department of Health that all potential sites in the Bronx were looked at and this and various criteria made those other sites not applicable, whereas this one is. I wasn't part of the looking process, though, you know, but this is what that we understand and we believe and we trust that over three years is a very long time to be looking and examining a lot of sites. Okay, anybody else want to answer that question? 
Okay, well, thank you. And anybody else who comes up, any advocates, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that too, because it was proposed to the city, it was possibly looking at this MTA site after the first plan fell apart. And um, we still look wait for that answer. Okay, we're going to call the next panel, Hattie Overman. Oh, she did? Yeah. Ms. Overman, you're representing yourself now? Yes. Okay, just want to be clear. <laughs> Two for the price of one. Mary Pearson, Stuart Edwards, Leslie Peterson, and Nelson Sweeting. Please come up. Please come up. We are on a clock today. Are all the names that I just called present? Are we, is the panel set? Are we still? Yes, you call an extra. Okay, before we begin, I'm going to ask you once again to please be mindful of the two-minute clock. It's right before you, so I ask that you, as you speak, uh, please be mindful of the two minutes on the clock. You may begin. Good afternoon. Thank you again for accepting me to speak on my behalf. My name is Hattie Overman, and I, I reside. Oh, okay. My name is Hattie Overman, and I reside in Co-op City, the Bronx. I am writing to object to the uh, building of an animal shelter at 2050 Bartow Avenue. Uh, something that we haven't thought about. The proposed animal shelter to be built, will be built in the midst of three restaurants, not one, but three, thereby concerns of safety and health issues. As a result, the animals could be put at risk of eliminating themselves due to nervousness, unable to control themselves, particularly if stuck in traffic gridlock. Uh, which we, which happens at any time on Bartow Avenue. It happens on Bay Plaza Mall and the surrounding vicinity. This location, in my opinion, is not proper. Uh, is not a proper site for the transportation of animals on a daily basis in congested traffic. Uh, the 2050 Bartow Avenue site is in the Northeast Bronx and is not centrally located as specified by the city's proposed requirement. This location is also adjourned to uh, Co-op City Community, which is, uh, uh, as we understand it, is uh, uh, that uh, 
the city planning and animal shelter in the community of Co-op City did not contact Co-op City nor involved us in the planning process, not even to let us know that they was proposing an uh, uh, animal shelter. As a matter of principle and respect, our community should have been told about this since it was in two years in planning. So in my conclusion, Councilman uh, Can uh, Andy King and City Council, Co-op City will be celebrating 50 years of existence, yet we have no state of facility or of facility for our, for our youth of our community of 55,000 plus. Thank you for listening. Good evening. My name is Nelson Sweeting. I'm a Co-op City resident for over 30 years. The first meeting I recall was on May 24th about this animal shelter, which is 2018, okay, by the, by the community board. In my opinion, I feel that the community was disrespected in many ways. The community was disrespected and because of the fact that we were never told about this community shelter. We were informed, and this was going on for over three years. The, I'm appalled because the first time we heard about it was May 24th. Not only that, Co-op City has a no dog policy. So you're gonna put an animal shelter where there's no dog policy. That's my opinion. Hi, my name is Mary Pearson. I'm representing Co-op City. As I'm one of the directors. We have several here. Um, I want to take exception to the first speaker who said that it was on the southern border of Co-op City. They don't even know the location. Two-thirds of Co-op City is north of the location, and one-third is below it. Uh, the, um, the second speaker said it will allow residents to keep their pets. We are a no-pet community. Everyone who goes to Co-op City signs no pets, with the exception of service and support animals. Support animals have been, as you know, there's uh, lots of lawsuits. Support animals are getting out of control because there are really no uh, um, restraints for anyone saying, I need a support animal. Um, next, location, accessibility. We can barely get home to our own communities via bus. We're fighting for new bus routes. It's really very inaccessible. If you say it's near subways, you're wrong. This six train, you have to go over entrance ramps to Interstate I-95 to be able to get to the uh, to Co-op City to get uh, into it from the subway station. Um, so we're not accessible. Like, many people kept saying it's a benefit to the community. Again, we are a no pet community. It is not a benefit to us. As Mr. Sweeting said, it was incredibly disrespectful. We were not asked about it. We were n there was no plan over the years speaking to the residents. First time we heard about it, as Ms. Hoverman said, was May 24th. We called an ad hoc meeting. We were told, we were informed that we were going to have no plan B. This is where it should be. We fought that, we won. The next CB meeting, we won. The board, uh, the borough president, we won. Then it went to the non-emotional community planning board that's put together by the mayor who has the necessity of getting an animal shelter in each borough. We want an animal shelter in, sorry, in the Bronx, but not where we are. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Stuart Edwards, and um, I'm a 45, year resident of Co-op City. And as long as I've been living there, we've always been, and all the organizations agree that we should build a youth and a senior citizen center because that's what keeps people uh, going and keeps our youth out of trouble. You know, because every night I read in the papers, or uh, should I say, on Channel 12 on TV, about our youth getting in trouble because they don't have anything else to do. Now, one of the worst things that happens to young youth is that they have a lot of energy, and the energy should be put to something positive. And a youth center is positive. I know because I grew up in a youth center, and I've never gotten in trouble until I got to this problem that we got today. 
So well, what I want to say in reference to that is that we need a youth center, and that's what we've been working for, and that we, we deserve it because this is a democratic um, place where we live. So we run it. We have voting rights. We have, we have all kinds of rights in Co-op City, and so we should have the right to decide what is moving to our community, especially at this stage, because when they're dumping things on us that we don't want. And, then, and certainly, we all have a 90, over 95% agreement among our residents that we don't want a, a, a animal shelter in Co-op City at any part, at any part of Co-op City, because we are, like they say, a dog-free uh, community, and we only allow that dogs to be allowed in there unless they're a comfort dog. That's the only case. And, it's, and, it's, and it should remain that way. Thank you. Um, okay. uh, good afternoon. My name is Leslie Peterson. I've been just taking out stuff here to try to fit within the two minute time frame. Um, I am here in support of the Co-op City Community, my home. During this process, the New York City Community Affairs Unit has been doing much of the presenting regarding this issue. However, the Community Affairs Unit never bothered to reach out to the community. Additionally, they did not reach out to our Community Board 10 or our Borough President. Still, I am proud of the Co-op City Community who have stayed the course during the Uniform Land Use Review Procedure in order to have a say about their quality of life. As was stated before, we are located in the extreme Northeast Bronx. During their presentation, the Community Affairs Department and animal care speakers said a criteria for this selection was its location. This location is neither centrally located nor easy to get to. In fact, this location is away from adequate public transportation and will be especially difficult for those living in the West Bronx. Our borough president has stated what is key is a more centralized location to maximize accessibility for Bronx residents. There should be boundaries between commercial and residential establishments. The facility, again, as mentioned before, is, locate, is located between a Red Lobster and a senior facility. What the animal shelter is proposing is 8,600 square feet for an exterior courtyard and outdoor run for um, outdoor, outdoor dog run for open air space. You cannot dictate where the animals will relieve themselves, so between that and the barking, large next to Red Lobster in a senior facility is inconsistent with the character of the community and the rights of those nearby and should be taken into account. Mm -hmm. Our borough president, Ruben Diaz Jr., said that had he been aware that this process was underway, a suitable site that satisfies all stakeholders could have been identified. I would like you to give our borough president and our councilmen that opportunity. There is also a golf range owned by MTA. <laughs> um, let me just say, can go I Go ahead, I love I just, your delivery. Go, can go I ahead. just say this? We respect the efforts of the city and especially our council members on advocating and passing a law for an animal shelter in every borough. There are approximately six years left before this bill must be fulfilled, so it is not a fait accompli. Give our borough an opportunity to find a more suitable, accessible location. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank all of you. Could I get Stuart 17 seconds? <laughs> you can have mine. I'm, I'm on, I'm on. And Nelson's five seconds. Oh, gosh. May I? I want to pass this in. She has 17 seconds if she wants it. <laughs> We're going to have to dismiss the panel and call up the other panel, but thank you so much for your testimony. Thank you. It's a good try, too. Trading a little, that's good. <laughs> okay, we're gonna call up the next panel real quickly. Uh, it, is it Edita? Burkret? Yes, okay. Elizabeth Jensen? Is that William? William? William Stacy? William Stacy? And Judith, Judith Lusgarden. Okay.
You may begin. Hi. My name is Adita Bernkrant, and I'm the executive director of NICLAS, an animal advocacy and political action nonprofit with supporters and activist chapters in all five boroughs, including the Bronx. The Bronx desperately needs a full service animal shelter, but it won't get one unless this committee votes yes on the Bartow Avenue site. As was mentioned, it took the city three full years to select this site as the location after visiting 50 other locations. Denying this proposal would mean a shelter cannot possibly be built by 2024 and perhaps not ever. And in addition to enabling thousands more homeless animals to be saved and adopted each year and relieve the severe overcrowding at the other three animal care centers, it would also provide much needed services to the community members, such as low cost veterinary care, care for vaccina vaccinations, wellness checks, and a spay neuter clinic, a pet food bank, free dog training and pet surrender prevention counts counseling to prevent pe pets from being surrendered due to lack of resources. There is a critical need for these services in the Bronx. Many residents of the Bro Bronx consider their pets their family members, and they deserve adequate access to pet care resources, which this shelter would provide. Every time there are low-cost or free mobile spay-neuter vet clinics in the Bronx, there are extremely long lines of community members waiting to treat their beloved pets. Um, and many waiting often cannot even be served because there's not enough time or, or the ability for the vet clinics to handle everybody waiting. So this shows the dire need for a full service animal shelter and the resources that go along with it. And it's unfair to deny the people in the community who need these resources desperately this shelter. Um, in addition, these badly needed resources, the Bronx Shelter would provide over 100 jobs, ranging from managerial to union jobs to minimum wage jobs, many with excellent career path options. And the Bronx Shelter would also provide youth and senior volunteer programs. And it's well established that such programs offer positive impacts on those involved, so please vote yes on this shelter. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Jensen. I'm the Northeast Regional Director for Best Friends Animal Society. We are a national organization dedicated to ending the killing of dogs and cats in America's shelters. And our mission is a better world through kindness to animals. Now, I was born in Queens. I'm first generation American. And when I got my first decent paying job and it was time to buy a home, um, I bought an apartment in the Bronx. And one of the reasons that I bought that apartment is because there was a dog park there. And that was a long time ago, and I am definitely not in a position to tell the residents of the Bronx what they should be doing. Um, I honestly am listening to um, the people here speaking about their community and, and feeling their pain about not have ha feeling they had an adequate voice in this. I think as a resident um, of the Bronx, I would have been upset if people were telling me I wasn't allowed to have an animal where I lived, but that's a separate issue. Um, but I'm really just here to um, give resources and information and share that and see if that's of any value. Um, the American Medical Association and the American um, Medical Veterinary Association um, got together and did a lot of work around this idea of One Health and how the health of people in a community and their animals are inextricably linked. And as an outcome of that, um, there was a study done by the University of Denver um, in 2017 on Austin. Um, and the reason that they chose Austin is because Austin had recently put its stake in the ground um, and really decided that it wanted to have an amazing progressive community. Um, and part of that involved animal welfare and the stake in the ground they put in that. And so the study um, really looked at the impact of doing this. And what they found was that over a six year period, um, Austin, doing that and showing that commitment and putting forth the work that took that to happen um, generated a positive in cap of over $160 million that was brought to Austin um, as a result of that endeavor. And I don't want to um, overstate time. I have a lot of information that I can share about how it creates jobs and creates a brand awareness to make the Bronx a place that people will want to be um, for generations to come. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Sacre, Director of Community Outreach for the Shelter Reform Action Committee, and thank you very much to the committee for the opportunity to speak today. Now today, the stars are in alignment for Bronx residents. Finally, there's the possibility that there may they may actually get their own animal shelter. How, after 18 years of unfulfilled promises, has this come to pass? First, 
We have a city council that passed a law requiring shelters for all five boroughs. Is your microphone on? I hope so. Yes. yes it is. I'm it sorry. Is. Okay. Second, key council leaders are heading to ch are heeding the charge to enforce that law. And third, for the first time in New York City history, we have a mayor who has made the shelters for every borough a key plank of his administration. And fourth, the city has identified a site that checks off a host of the must-haves for an animal shelter. So let's be clear. It's now or never for the Bronx. If the Bartow Avenue site is not approved, odds are that none of us here today will live long enough to see a Bronx animal shelter. Please do not let real estate developers derail a $60 million state-of-the-art facility that will serve not only Bronx residents, but all New York City residents and their pets. We so appreciate your consideration of the Bartow Avenue facility site and seek your support to ensure its approval. Thank you. I just want to, if I, this, since there's a little time left on his clock, that to answer the question that was asked by multiple people about the golf course, that is owned by the Department of Transportation and it is not suitable or available to be an animal shelter. So that's not on the table. So that's the reason that it wasn't picked as a site and it can never be an animal shelter. Just want to get that on the record, not possible. Thank you. My name is Judith Luskarten. Year after year, decade after decade, administration after administration, broken promises, blind eyes, and deaf ears to this business arena. And it's a business just like every other business that exists. In fact, it's an enormous business, yet it's never gotten that acknowledgement. Oh, they're just animals. It's enough already. Every business needs to be handled and handled responsibly. Sadly, they depend on human beings to protect them, treat them properly, responsibly, as they are otherwise defenseless against human hands and minds. Why do you feel they don't matter? Because they don't have a voice? Because they don't vote? We're it. Bronx has the highest population of animals, therefore it makes the most sense logistically that there's an animal shelter in the Bronx. The people in the Bronx shouldn't have to travel lengths to adopt an animal. Here's a bottom line for you. June 2018, Council Member Paul Vallone passed legislation mandating that every borough in New York City has to have an animal shelter. The Bronx residents want this shelter. The Bronx has had years to do something with this property and they let it sit. They said they did little to nothing. Now, now that it's on the table to build a proper animal shelter, which again has now been mandated, everyone has something to say. Again, you had years to do something. You did nothing, barely any talk. Youth Center was voted against by River Bay, River, River Bay's Board of Directors. River Bay Board of Directors wanted to rent it to stores. And there's already a youth center nearby, by the way, and still absolutely no action. This space has remained vacant. This will provide jobs, it will provide a place for youth and seniors to volunteer at, it will provide adoption, veterinary, and education services, it will provide low-cost spay neutering, which will prevent unwanted litters for all of your constituents. Do you know the studies on animals and seniors and ch children? Have you read any? You're discounting the value of these animals as well as the business. A, a Bronx shelter when putting the proper people, blah, 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 blah. okay, hold on. Uh, the Bronx is the perfect example of the fact that New York City is in the gutter when, when it comes to homeless animals. We need to get this taken care of. And Thank you. I'm going to remind you that we can, we can take your submitted written testimony within 72 oh, hours. I'm going to encourage you to, to send it to us as well. So we, we have to... Um, we, we need a fair and we, reasonable we negotiations. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have to place. ask you to step down. Please do submit the written testimony. We're going to call the next panel. Margaret Chinnery, Karen Drakeford, Aaron Carnegie, Yvette Vernon, and I think it's Damien Green, is it Ayala? Please come up. Test and one, two. Hello. Hello. 
testing, one, two, testing. She called you first. We have four out of five. You want me to go, okay. you want me to go there? Or? All right. Okay, very good. You may begin. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. On the matter of the animal shelter, things have now gone from bad to worse. And stating Can you that, please identify yourself oh, for the I'm record? Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret Thank Shinnery. You. Thank you. Things have now gone from bad to worse. In stating that, we, the residents of Co-op City, do not want an animal shelter in our midst. We have opened ourselves up to persons with the intent to intimidate. Even the, slave, even the slavery issue has been brought up. We have been photographed, questioned by the opposition, and have been called a community of old people who do not need a youth center. Please be advised that we have four schools in our community serving the children of Co-op City. A youth multifunctional center is urgently needed to enlighten, train, and occupy our children. The center could also be used for our so-called old people to use when the community facilities are closed and on holidays and weekends. The center was not voted down by River Bay. Please remember that. It was not voted down. There are many places in the borough of the Bronx that would be a perfect location for an animal shelter. For example, the Hunts Point area, the Port Morris area, area, the old golf course driving range that is owned by the city and leased to the Department of Transportation, and the Zariga Industrial Park. All of these areas are not within a residential no-pet community and have access to transportation. So let the powers that be know that we will fight this proposal despite intimidation we say our children and seniors come first. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Karen Drakeford. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I have been a social worker in the school system for almost 40 years. I have lived in various parts of the Bronx as well as worked all over the Bronx and have lived in Co-op City for almost 20 years. I am very familiar with all the different dynamics of different communities in the Bronx. It's interesting to me that they keep speaking in regards to the Bronx community. We have very many different subcultures within the Bronx. Co-op City is one of those subcultures. In the beginning of this um, hearing, we talked about respect. This hearing really is not about dog lovers versus non-dog lovers. It's about respect. When one sub-community dictates to another one that they know better than we do what we need, they decide better than we do what we want and how we want it. I invite those who are hiding under this preface of being pro-animals and we are against animals to come to our community, come visit us, talk to us for real, come walk the streets, see how our children are hanging out, getting into trouble. I have lost many of my students to the streets because there is not such a facility. I have seen many elders begin to um, deteriorate because they don't have the stimulation. There is nothing, we should not be pitting animals against human beings. First of all, we are all human. Our dignity should be considered and to talk about and at a community instead of with a community is very, very insulting. This country as a whole has tend to do that. If you look at the complexions of those who feel they know better than the complexions of those of us who have come to try to speak up for our rights, speaks volumes of the, the politics that go on in this country as a whole and how this is a subcountry of it. No one in this room would appreciate it if any subcommunity community went to theirs and dictated to them what they needed and what was best for them. Thank you. Sir? Hi, my name is Damien. All right, let me find the page I'm on. What's your last name, sir? Uh, my, na my, my last name is Green Ayala. So a lot of people know me as Ayala or Green or Green Ayala. No one really knows how to pronounce my name. 
that's my name. Um, so let me begin. All right, I'm a former foster case of the Bronx. There's your youth program. Um, I'm a resident of Kingsbridge, Jackson, South Bronx Park, South Bronx. There's your affirmation. My Hamlet sob story is limited to this revised testimony because I'm a new student of biodiversity and animal rights. And don't let my introduction fool you. I'm just as offended as any co-op resident that they would side with a real estate conglomerate at their benefit, out of their benefit. To send a progressive project to an NTA allocated golf course stresses the same conflicts we as animal biologists, as New Yorkers and activists have as the opposition. You don't like five minute, you don't like waiting 30 like hours for, for a six train, we don't either. But this side shouldn't end at animals and building an animal clinic won't. It will create jobs, it constitutes opportunities and growth for thousands of aspiring and practicing vets, doctors, and students. We're talking about our youth and our, and our elders. Okay, let's include them. They're not excluded in this, no one is. This is a great opportunity for everyone in the Bronx. Everyone, and that's what we should be looking at right now. We are not friends of capitalism or gentrification. No animal activist in here is. Everyone needs a home, everyone needs a place to stay, but that doesn't stop at humans. We are not friends of capitalism or gentrification. We are friends of artists, cooks, doctors, construction workers. We are friends of the Bronx, and we are friends of animals. Thank you. Sir? My name is Aaron Carnegie. I was born and raised in Co-op City. I am a still a resident of Co-op City. I teach tennis to the youth of Co-op City. We have been asking for a sports complex in Co-op City forever. And if anyone here thinks that River Bay voted down anything, you're mistaken. Also, we have other sports in Co-op City, football, um, Little League, basketball. We don't need a animal shelter in Co-op City. The golf course is a perfect location for the animal shelter. It is four times as big. If that computer screen would work, I could show you how big it is. But that that's, that golf course is where this place should be. If you put that shelter in Co-op City, you are essentially raping our community. You are forcing a building in our community while the community is telling you no, no, no. This is not the first time we've been here saying no. This is the third or fourth time we've come in front of people saying no. Common sense should tell you we need to change the location. Common sense, we just found out today that this city-owned land is the golf course. Why can't we, someone go tomorrow and check it out? There's no big delay. If people do their jobs, there's no delay. That's all I have to say. I'll take your 19 seconds. Thank you. If I need to. If I need to. Which one, what do I do? No, I turn it on. Turn the, this coat puts yeah, it on? Oh, it's on, okay. Uh, hello, my name is Yvette Vernon. I'm a 43-year resident of Co-op City. Uh, I, I am opposed to an animal shelter. Um, one of the questions I have, or I'm gonna make a statement, I've listened to several, I've listened to a lot of the advocates, but do any of these advocates live in the Bronx or even live in Co-op City? You know, that, you know, if, if they lived in Co-op City, I could understand them advocating uh, a, a excuse me, in an animal shelter, but they don't. So one of the other things is that it was thrust upon us to actually, to, uh, by, thrust upon us in May to, to uh, excuse me, about uh, regarding the, the animal shelter. We had no idea that, it, that, that the animal shelter was, was going to be built. And ever since then, we have been pushing to ensure that it, that it does not get built in our community. 
There is a place, the golf course, the golf course is ideal. One of the other problems that we have, there's tr uh, an, an enormous amount of traffic. Adding that, that, that animal shelter would create a big problem for us because we've already got problems with the, the Bay Plaza Mall. The other thing is that the animal shelter is right between a red lobster and, a, and an assisted living, uh, living com uh, community, uh, community. That makes no sense. Um, no pet community. And also, Co-op City is a no pet community. What sense does it make for us to have a, a, com uh, a pet, a, an animal shelter across the street from us. Uh, as far as an alternate site, what was the alternate site that was, that, that was, that was requested? What was, where's plan B? Never saw plan B. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all so much for your time today. We appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, our next panel, Aaron Koenig, and Ann Dempelwolf, Roxanne Delgado, Roberto Benelli, please step up. You may begin. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marion Koenig. I am a co-founder of the Bronx Animal Shelter Endeavor. I am a resident of the Bronx. As an animal rescuer, I am seeing up close on the streets of the Bronx the desperate need for this. I have a speech here that was going to repeat the law and many of the things that have been said here. So I just can say that um, to Co-op City, there is, yes, a restaurant on one side and a senior citizen. We think that's fantastic because the restaurant's gonna get a lot more business and the senior center is gonna have wonderful little activities. We're going to be giving all sorts of training and educational programs there. Okay. We know it's a law. We believe that the need and funding for a full service animal shelter in the Bronx has been attained. An exhaustive multi-year search on approximately 20 properties, city and privately owned, was presented to the DOH, and this site is the only one that actually fits the full criteria with no municipal impact to surrounding areas. Um, the shelter, like we said, is going to offer jobs, great for the youth. It's gonna offer educational programs. Can you imagine, instead of learning about bad things of using cats for target practice, which I've witnessed, or dog fighting, imagine a world without that, without dog fighting, because young adults have learned love and responsibility at all of our programs. We absolutely cannot in good conscience deny our Bronx Animal Shelter this location, which is not slated for any other project or development, no matter what local lawmakers or law, local councilmen say. Prolonging this obvious decision only endangers animals in all five boroughs by continuing to overcrowd the three existing shelters with Bronx animals. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Ann Dempywolf, and I'm just going on the record to say that I live within the community board 10 of the Bronx. I'm not just an activist from elsewhere. You know, I live within the community and I'm 100% for this much needed shelter. And this, much, this shelter will serve the entire Bronx. It is easily accept, accessible by public transportation and by cars. There's, I thought there was six bus lines, but I heard there's 11 that go there. The highway exit is right there. There's gonna be ample parking. Um, the shelter is not just for Co-op City. I understand they don't allow dogs there, but their beef should not be with us. You know, if they want dogs, you know, or cats, that should be with their co-op board. You know, why are they, you know, blaming us? Um, it's not just for that one area. Um, they they wanted stores there, but it's the it, the build the place stayed vacant. Then they wanted a youth center, uh, and that was shot down. There will never be a youth center there. Don't be fooled. This will never be a youth center and it will never be a senior center. Real estate developers are looking to put condos there. That's what's gonna be there. If the, if the shelter isn't there, there will be condos. Talk about traffic, there will be much more traffic in, with those condos there than with the animal shelter. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Thank you. Hello. My name is Roberto Bonelli. I run an animal advocacy group called the Animals Battalion. I am also on the board of a local non-for-profit cat rescue in Queens. Though I focus on animal advocacy, I also assist in animal rescue by fostering, trapping, and neutering community cats. I am here today because I, I have adopted five cats, all of them rescued from the streets of the Bronx. Each of these cats were in the care of a Bronx resident who was a rescuer. Rescuers who are overworked by the abandoned animal epidemic in that borough. I have been able to develop this friendship with these rescuers because they regularly come into my borough in Queens. It is well known that the Bronx is a pet services desert that lacks the resources that we have in the other boroughs. Supposedly, Intro 401 mandated that every New York City borough have a full service animal shelter operating by 2024. Denying this proposal would mean the Bronx would not meet this objective. I hear a lot of talk about community. I would argue that these abandoned animals are your community members as well, and by not having a shelter, you have failed them. I would argue that the Bronx animal rescuers who are forced to travel to other boroughs have been failed as well. The Bronx is solely responsible for its abandoned animal epidemic, and it is time for the community to step up and solve a problem of its own creation. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roxanne Delgado. I live in the northeast side of the Bronx. Um, this is a needed service for the entire Bronx, including Co-op City, because actually Co-op City has the actual, uh, highest concentration of service pets, including emotion, support emotional pets as well. So despite its no-dog pet policy, it actually has the highest concentration of service pets in the Bronx. The community board that voted against the site listed the full-scale animal shelter on the statement of needs. <clears throat> it did not list any youth center for Co-op City on its needs. Neither the borough president nor the city council allocated one penny to any youth center in Co-op City. A campaign has been raised to promote a youth center, but there is no money budgeted for that youth center, and nor is it listed in any of the community board's statement of needs for any years, including this year. For almost 20 years, no action was taken for any youth center in that site, or much less anywhere in Co-op City. Now that the city proposed the animal facility at this site, a youth center is promoted to create competing needs to shield a developer who wants this site. <clears throat> AM New York reported the developer paid over 200,000 lobby fees to acquire this site for a 30-story development. The Bronx surrenders the most animals in the city, and this overburdens the other shelters in the city. This makes, that means there's less space, less time, and less care for these poor animals. In fact, many animals get sick because of overcrowding, and also many are euthanized because of lack of space. The opposition, including City Council Member Andy King and the Borough President, state they will pro 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 uh, propose an alternative site. But however, in every, every meeting that we met with them, they couldn't provide any alternative site, including the MTA, which is for the highest bidder, and the golf course has been already rejected as a site for the Bronx Animal Shelter. River Bay has over 300 acres of land and millions in the bank to build a youth center for, on their property. As a former president at the River Bay Fund wrote, 
when River Bay Board of Directors approved using the bingo hall for the youth center, not one elected official stepped up and did nothing to make it happen. Now the elected officials can make this animal shelter happen on Bay Plaza and also help co op City build the youth center on their property. The false narrative of competing needs is political and disingenuous. Sorry. <clears throat> May I say I have over 1,200 1, postcards, 500 were signed by co-op residents, collected by uh, co-op resident Jen Gonzalez. We actually have an email in support by the former president of River Bay Fund. We also have emails from co-op city residents and also from um, um, law enforcement, uh, community board members, for, uh, current and former, and there's almost 100 emails from Bronx Reddit residents. So, and also have over 5,500 signatures on change.org, which I can submit to you um, by PDF, it's too much to print. Okay, we're gonna submit that into Thank the record. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for your Thank testimony. You. Thank you, panel. Thank you. That, that's our way to clap in the council chamber. We, we, we can't do this, we, we, do, we do this. Okay, calling Craig Seaman, Katarina Trebano, Trebazo. Mr. Simantilli, Rita McMahon, Bienvenida Quintana. Were you supposed to be here, love? What, what, did they call you? Well, they would have put our cards together because we both strong voices for shelter animals, but now they can't find me. Oh, did they call your name? No, I'm missing my card, apparently. And Marilyn Galfin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be on, I'll be on my knees <laughs> when the time comes. Oh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Would you like me to wait for the next round and give her opportunity or no? Are you okay there? Oh. Well, you may begin. We gotta get a bus by okay. five. Go home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marilyn Galfin, Voices for Shelter Animals, a full-service, state-of-the-art shelter. Uh, in the Bronx on Bartell Avenue must be built, and I asked the council to support that. Bronx, the most populated and underserved New York City community, has been fighting for a state-of-the-art shelter for close to two decades. In spite of busing in only the op opponents, 
to attempt to deny the Bronx constituents this most needed service, there is a legal obligation to build it. It will take already till 2024. Animals can't wait, people can't wait any longer looking for another location. There are lives at stake. Greedy real estate industries should not trump over the lives of these sentient beings. Dogs and cats' lives matter. With no Bronx shelter, the animals are dropped off from Bronx admission state, uh, shelter centers and transferred into disease-ravaged shelters in mainly Manhattan. This overburdens the Manhattan facility. Exposed to unsanitary conditions in these old dilapidated buildings with bad air systems, these animals catch a simple dog or cat cold from the shelter and many are killed for that. This is unconscionable. More animals add to overcrowding, which is one of the issues affecting disease control. So this really is a citywide issue. A new state-of-the-art Bronx shelter with proper air system will not breed disease. Healthy animals will not be exposed to sick animals and along with the better isolation units will limit the cycle of illness. This will also make it easier to implement, implement our vision of no kill. Many rescues will pull animals if there's less of a financial burden of caring for very sick animals. Many stop pulling now because of this. More of, the fosters will, more of their fosters will take in animals. Fostering is a main component of no kill. With less intake, this will give all the animals in all the shelters a better chance to have the time, proper care, and attention they deserve. People of this Bronx community should not have to suffer the emotional despair of putting their pets, which are family members for many of us, into these disease shelters where they can end up being killed. They should not be denied the benefits of a state-of-the-art shelter with all its associated programs like food pantry. These are their the beloved pets. This will save thousands of animals' lives, and this is a benefit, as was stated before by someone, that this will be an historic moment for the Bronx, especially if we have our vision of it being no kill shelter. Thank you. Hello, I'm Craig Seaman of Voices for Shelter Animals. Also, no single entity should impede the city's badly needed animal shelter. While the siding of some city services are steeped in controversy due to health and public safety risk issues, there's no such tangible concern here. We must democratically and proportionally represent the city of 8.6 million, million people and an estimated 1.1 million companion animals. This not only impacts the nearly 1.5 million people of the Bronx who, with the convenience of a Bronx shelter, can provide loving homes to these animals and have access to badly needed affordable veterinary care or, in the most dire circumstances, have a place that can assist them in rehoming companion animals who would otherwise face an uncertain future. Certainly, uh, currently, the only, with only a drop-off center in the Bronx, the Manhattan Animal Care Center is overburdened with intake, which increases the spread of disease at an inadequately equipped facility. This creates a ripple effect throughout the entire shelter system, resulting in the death of healthy, treatable animals. We're not only depriving these animals of their lives, we're depriving the orcas of those potential family members. A new Bronx shelter will, with state-of-the-art health facilities, which includes proper isolation care where sick animals can heal, and a proper HVAC system can prevent the spread of CIRDC and URI, U, URI that plagues the shelter system. It will, in turn, alleviate the burden of the less well-equipped Manhattan shelter and therefore increase live outcomes throughout the entire city's shelter system. The people of the Bronx have been denied a promise for a centralized location to adopt those family members for 18 years since the original shelter bill was passed in 2000. It will be 24 years by the time the Bronx shelter is finally completed. Do not prolong the wait. This affects all New York City constituents. Your obligations to both human and non is to support this shelter. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council. My name is Caterina Trabazzo, representing Brooklyn Queens Animal Safe. I support the Bartow Avenue Bronx Shelter proposal, and I urge the City Council to approve it. Denying this proposal is depriving the residents of the Bronx the basic right to have companion animals at an affordable cost. Unfortunately, many Bronx residents are low-income citizens deprived of many resources that other boroughs are privileged to have. Adding to this, denying this proposal forces many of these residents to travel outside of the borough for vet care. We should not be adding to these disparities. 
everyone, regardless of income, deserves the happiness of sharing their life with a pet at an affordable cost at their convenience. Having a companion animal should not be a privilege. In addition, this long overdue shelter would allow Bronx res residents to adopt an animal in need of a home. The shelter would also provide affordable medical care for companion animals living in this borough and a much needed educational center. It is shameful enough that we have to pay taxes on pet food. Furthermore, this much needed shelter will provide additional jobs to Bronx residents. It's also appalling that, so, that, the, that some would assume this is prioritizing animals when in fact these same individuals forget to realize that these, this is actually prioritizing humans by allowing individuals and families to share their life with animals or animals. Also studies have proven that having animals improved the happiness and health of these, of these, of those sharing a home with a pet. This is New York City, the capital of the world, yet we do not have an animal shelter in every borough. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Right. I'm Rita McMahon, and I'm the director of the Wild Bird Fund. I'd like to speak about possibilities, in truth, more than an argument. The Wild Bird Fund is New York City's one and only wildlife rehabilitation center. We're a not-for-profit that serves the people in all five boroughs. In 2017, we treated 6,000 birds and animals brought in by thousands of caring New Yorkers. How do we do this? It's not easy. Mostly, it's ACC that's allowed this to happen, as well as all the people who work and try to help wildlife. Our mission is twofold. The Wild Bird Fund mission is twofold. First, to provide medical care and rehabilitation for the injured, ill, and orphaned wildlife of New York City so they can be released back to the wild. The second is to educate New Yorkers, particularly the young, about the rich diversity and environmental needs of the city's wildlife. Over the past decade, Wild Bird Fund has worked in tandem with ACC. In large part, it is thanks to ACC that we are able to serve all five boroughs. When a compassionate New Yorker finds an injured wild bird, squirrel, anything, they will first think of ACC. They call, often ACC goes to pick up the animal, and ACC then will bring it to the wildlife rehabilitators. So we have thousands of animals that have come from ACC, thousands of animals that have come from New Yorkers. In the Bartow, I want to talk about, I know ACC for these 10 years and how they've helped us by bringing the animals, and we help them, we've trained them how to deal with wildlife, how to give it emergency care. And so the numbers of surviving has gone up so much. They work hard, they have a heart. In the Bartow Center, if the Bartow, Bartow Center became a reality, we would offer, I'm so sorry. What's your name? Okay. Thank you. We will offer the full array of our educational programs through ACC's Community Engagement Center. And we have a big array of programs that we do out of the Manhattan Center. Michelle is, in fact, one of our educators. So I thank you, Michelle. Um, the second part of our mission is to educate New Yorkers, particularly the children, about the rich diversity of the wildlife and what are their environmental needs in the city. The Bartow, Bartow site is an exceptional opportunity for wildlife programming because nature's ideal classroom is less than a mile away, just 16 blocks. The Thomas Pell Wildlife Sanctuary and Pelham Bay Park would be phenomenal and how it could be used with the schools. The programs at the Bartow site would be a truly unique opportunity for the underserved Bronx. Nowhere else could we bring together ACC's expertise and support, the Wild Bird Fund outreach and community involvement, and the Norse 
North Bronx wonderfully wild nature sites. We have a tremendous opportunity here that would make it a signature part of the city. Uh, our signature programs, we have Pigeon Academy for preschool and first graders, the Bird Academy, second to fifth graders. We do educational components where we have internships for college and high school students and program, we've had a program for at-risk teens since 2013. Every year, every semester, we have more at-risk teens. I have included a letter from the Bronx Guild, it is now renamed, we still do business with them, where they call our program gold. There is nothing like what we offer, and we would do the same. Going on, just simply, Please. we are already served Gotham Collaborative High School, the Bronx Lab, Moshulu Montefiore Community Center, and City of School. The Wild Bird Fund, with the help of ACC, would be able to present that to all of Bronx, to the North Bronx. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. I thank you very much, because my bus is waiting outside. Uh, my name is Bienvenida Quintana. I'm from 120 Aldrich. And I think maybe what I'm going to say has been said, but I didn't hear it, so I'll say it again. Uh, I live in Co-op City to, to close to 50 years, and I have seen my community go from suburban to 42nd Street. Uh, I'm not against animals, but I think the animal shelter should go in a different location without exaggerating making our traffic congestion worse. Um, we have a hotel that's coming in the near future in the area. We have Burlington that's coming. There are several other stores more that are coming. We have our own police, our own uh, the, the, the fire department, uh, and I'm concerned because we also have a housing for the elderly next to the shelter. And I'm concerned for their lives because I don't know with the congestion that this is all going to implement uh, that our lives could not be lost due to the fact that our fire department and our police will not be able to navigate our community. I thank you very much. For the record, Egidio Cementelli. And uh, I'm sorry that the Councilman King left and some of the residents left because um, we wanted to discuss some of the traffic issues that was mentioned. And as the, the lady that just spoke, she mentioned how many other stores are coming to Co-op City. Co-op City is the largest, largest mall in the Bronx and probably the city of New York. And it's growing every year. But here they talk about traffic. The hotel, was just mentioned. A hotel a half a block away on the same side is being proposed, six story, over two million square feet, 160 units. But no meetings, no public hearings have been held. Mr. King has not held one public hearing, one discussion of how this hotel, it might be a good hotel, it might be a hot sheet motel, it might be a contract for a city so homeless. We don't know, but there's no hearing. Madam Chair, there's only one individual that's preventing this shelter, animal shelter, to be located in the Bronx, and that is Mr. King. And the bottom line is, it's politics. I've said it when he wasn't. I said it to his face. I said it to other hearings. And I'm sorry he's not here to say it, but it's all politics. It's $200,000 of lobbyists, Patrick Jenkins, one of the district leaders, I believe in Brooklyn, is one of the biggest lobbyists in New York City. And he has received over 200,000. And when his client, who is the home, who has the building right next door, he's been trying to get this piece of property. It has not happened. It will not happen. The mayor will not give this property over, it's for an animal shelter, and I hope you move this project in a favorable uh, way. Madam Chair, I think it's only fair. Thank you so much. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, panel. We're gonna call the next panel. And I'm from the Bronx. <laughs> Sharon Discorfano. Chris Arinella, 
Richard Donovan, Bridget Supernova, and it just says here Palladino. You may begin. I go first. Hi, uh, my name is Richard Donovan. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the committee and members, uh, the members that were here uh, and are here now, for making this hearing possible. Uh, I do find it a little disheartening that the main uh, uh, opponent of this uh, plan, uh, Councilman King, gets up in the middle after talking about how this should be all about respect and listening, and then he gets up in the middle and leaves for an hour, and then everyone, everyone else leaves. I just think that says a lot. When I was in corporate America, if I left a meeting that meant a lot to me, I'd probably get fired. Just want to put that out there. Uh, we've all seen the gut-wrenching commercials on TV, the ones with the sad Sarah McLachlan songs showing cats and dogs scared and trembling in cages. They're cringeworthy. I think most people turn the channel because they feel helpless. It begs the question, how can we help these animals? They're innocent victims. When you peel back the curtain, it's imperative to acknowledge we have an overpopulation of unwanted dogs and cats in New York City. The current shelters in Manhattan, Staten Island, and Brooklyn can't handle the load anymore. This is where the Bronx can make a statement and help and something to be very proud of. The proposal to have a Bronx shelter on Bartow Avenue can help tens of thousands of animals while enriching the community. Offering affordable pet care as well as spay and neuter programs will dramatically reduce the number of unwanted animals in our city. The center will provide jobs in addition to offering youth and senior programs where shelter animals can visit hospitals and cancer wards. Anyone that has experienced the human-animal bond knows that our animals heal our souls, and Bronx, the Bronx should be a part of that experience. I've heard some concerns from the opposition along the lines of people before animals. That's a very disingenuous and false narrative. This is clearly not a choice of animals versus people, rather an opportunity to help the community and help the voiceless. I would hope those with that mindset would look at the big picture here and realize this is a big win. Finally, I saw something online to the, fact, to the effect of the pit bulls will escape and attack the neighborhood. That's good fodder for a sci-fi movie, but if you look at the other centers in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Staten Island, there's been no such stories. These animals are counting on us. We hold all the cards. Let's do the right thing. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Discarfano. I'm a New York City resident, member of the New York State Bar, and of the New York City Bar Association's Committee on Animal Law. I'm also an advisory board member for Wild Bird Fund. I'm here today testifying in a personal capacity in support of the Bartow site for an animal shelter. As you've been hearing from supporters today, the proposed site will ensure the humane treatment of animals and also serve a public good. With nearly a million and a half residents, the Bronx is long overdue for a shelter of its own. And the benefit extends to New Yorkers beyond the borough, as this shelter will relieve overcrowding in other New York City shelters. In addition to noting the impact on our human population, I want to add that the animals of the Bronx are deserving of their own shelter. These non-human New Yorkers deserve a local safe haven where they can receive essential care and the opportunity to be adopted into loving homes. The Pet Food Pantry and programs ACC offers will be a resource for humans and animals of the Bronx and even work towards reducing the intake of animals in the first place, a win-win as it serves animal welfare while also reducing the city's burden overall of care and rehoming. The opposition we've heard today, however, has more to do with the proposed location than the legitimate function of animal shelters in a society. And I empathize with those living in Co-op City and feeling their resistance to change in a community, it's always hard. But specifically and clearly to support the proposed site. With respect to animal shelter services, the Bronx to date is an underserved community. There is nowhere nearby offering the services needed and on the scale that it's needed. The proposed site will be suitably accessible in terms of proximity to Bronx residents and availability via public transportation. With its recent vote mandating each borough have its own full service shelter by 2024, 
City Council recognized a specific need of our communities. Approving this proposed site puts the city on track for fulfilling this need in the Bronx. Not approving the location will result in a delay of several years. <laughs> so especially with the mandate, uh, such a delay is simply out of bounds. For these reasons, I support, and I want to thank council members and all those whose efforts have gotten us to this point today. Hi, I'm Chris Arinella. I'm going to read a letter that I wrote. It is not always possible in life to vote for something which would benefit so many, as is the case of the proposed animal shelter on Bartow Avenue. Here is your opportunity. In other countries, I've seen animals lying in the streets after being hit by a car and left to die, as well as sick, pregnant, or victims of sadistic abuse. These dogs and cats were, uh, we considered to be found in third world countries. Yet, these same cases can be found right here in the Bronx. Are we, here in the Bronx, not more humane and evolved as humans so as not to allow this to continue? To support the proposed animal shelter is to do the right thing for our residents and our innocent animals. Not supporting a shelter is tantamount to living in the dark ages, when there were no safeguards to protect the less fortunate. Each year, dogs and cats are killed by the thousands in borough shelters due to lack of space for them. This is insanity. Imagine for a moment that your own pet got out of the house and couldn't find its way back home. Your pet would be subject to all the atrocities I listed and could end up killed in a shelter in another borough. The proposed shelter would benefit pet owners in the Bronx with low cost um, vets, spay-neuter programs, food banks, um, vaccine clinics, as well as volunteer opportunities for at-risk youths and seniors. It would be a win-win for all concerned. Um, I would also like to know how 55,000 residents of Co-op City could so um, determine what happens in the Bronx Good afternoon, my name is Bridget Supernova. I'm here as a resident of the Mott Haven neighborhood in the South Bronx. I have fostered over 200 felines and I offer local rescues, a place for injured, ill, and special needs cats for rehabilitation before placing them in the care of new homes. In my experience, the worst cases of animal neglect and abuse come from underserved, overpopulated communities, lacking resources and advocacy for pet care and animal welfare. By bringing an open access full service animal shelter to the Bronx, the city would be providing opportunities to lower unwanted populations, curb animal abuse, and nurture a healthy, equitable community for both humans and animals. The Bronx is home to the city's largest population of stray and abandoned animals, as well as pets not sterilized to prevent unwanted litters. A comprehensive animal shelter in the Bronx could be about so much more than just intaking dumped and found animals. No domestic abuse shelter in the city will take in victims with animals. The city's homeless shelters also do not allow animals and pets. The only emotional support and unconditional love some people know. This new shelter has an opportunity for the city to step up and better serve its people with crisis services. A trap neuter release program initiative could, could sorry, would help lower cat feral populations, which are highest in the Bronx. Low-cost vet services can help even keep our beloved bodega cats kept well, employed, and in their shops. The Bronx is home to about 1.4 million people, many of whom are pet owners or who encounter animals in need of human intervention and assistance. A shelter offers an opportunity for Bronx residents to participate in animal care and advocacy, to engage in community responsibility, and to develop pet compassion for other sentient beings. City Council person Andy King does not re represent the entire borough. He does not represent me. He does not represent the over 200 independent animal rescues and community caretakers who are scraping up the pieces for thousands of abused, abandoned, neglected, and stray animals the city fails to help every day. With no other viable option to meet the 2024 deadline, I support this land use. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marie Palladino. I'm an advocate rescuer. 
and I live in the Bronx. So the majority of the animals come through that Bronx, and I'm, I'm somebody who goes to the Fordham ACC quite frequently, um, and um, well, I do. I try to take animals that are adoptable. Excuse me, we just need for you to just put that microphone a little bit closer oh, so sorry. that okay. you can be heard. Not that close. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I, I frequent uh, the ACC Fordham, and I stand outside and try to rescue animals before they get surrendered to the facility. I could be there all day and have a thousand animals in, you know, in a couple of days. The point is that that facility is too small it, uh, for the demand and the resources, both medical, vet, pantry, spay and neuter. Let's say an animal comes in that needs to be euthanized right there and then they have no, you know, a really severely injured animal. They have no resources there. And by the way, that facility um, holds four employees and it's about as big as that box there. And so, the new shelter would provide all services mentioned that I just mentioned, and the shelter is, is, uh, is a community in need accommodation. The new shelter would lower death rates to the, due to the lack of space at the ACC in Manhattan, which is no bigger than that. Um, <laughs> it's true. People have a problem commuting from the Bronx to the other facilities, it's, a, it's a needed for overabundance of animals coming in. In New York City, I think in the Bronx, there's like 25,000, you know, don't quote me. Um, as a, I'm done already? <laughs> I didn't finish my notes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Thank you, panel, for, for hanging out today. Thank you for your testimony. Can I say just Appreciate one it. quick thing? I just want to acknowledge, it's unfortunate that they left, I want to acknowledge some of the people who spoke here from Co-op City. Um, some of them spoke about the lack of diverse representation in animal advocacy, and they're not wrong about that. I think this animal shelter is an opportunity to bridge that gap. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna call up the next panel. Daisy Michelle, Jay Howard, Deborah Thomas, Kirsten Cui, and Ray Rogers. Please come up. You make me go first. You may begin. Uh, my name is Kirsten Cooley. Thank you so much for hearing all of our testimonies. I do think it is very unfortunate that the residents left, especially when we're talking about respect. And um, I absolutely heard them, and I understand their issues. Um, I'm here actually to speak on behalf of a friend of mine who is a North Bronx resident. Uh, she does not live in Co-op City, but when I go to her house, I take the six all the way to the end, and then I have to walk another 10 minutes to her house. Um, and this is a story of her and her dog, Cinnamon. Um, Cinnamon is a pit bull. Sierra found Cinnamon wander ron bleh, wandering along Moshalu Parkway. She was emaciated, her nipples were swollen and sagging. She was on the brink of death, searching for scraps of food or a kind gesture from a Bronx resident. Um, Cinnamon had been the victim of a pit bull breeder. She was artificially inseminated, giving birth to litter after litter until her body and her spirit could no longer take the abuse. Once her body was no longer viable, her breeders callously dumped her on the side of the road. Cinnamon had done everything her owners required of her and still she was shown no love, no mercy, and when she could no longer turn a profit for them. If my friend Sierra had not found Cinnamon on the side of the parkway, who knows what might have happened to her or a human that she might have encountered. If she had been left outside to starve any longer, she might have attacked someone. But imagine if there had been this 
care sh this shelter that we are proposing where Cinnamon's breeders could have brought her instead of just dumping her on the side of the road. Um, I've heard, you know, we've heard this rhetoric of pit bulls getting loose and attacking people as a talking point of the opposition, but it's already happening. Um, people are already dumping their dogs, specifically pit bulls, on the side of the road, and Cinnamon is proof of this, and her case is absolutely not isolated. Um, a shelter in the Bronx would alleviate some of these issues, but we need this shelter and we need 10 more shelters. I, I don't know that the MTA site is a viable site, I'm hearing it's not, but we need so many more, than, and this is just the beginning, and so I thank you for listening, and I hope that you will approve this center, this shelter. <coughs> Hi, my name is Howard. I'm a New York City resident, and today I'm reading a statement on behalf of Diane Heem, director of the Humane Society of Westchester. I, this is what she says. I am speaking in support of the creation of a municipal animal shelter in the Bronx with an estimated population in 2018 of 1,471,160 people. It is absolutely unacceptable that the Bronx does not have an animal shelter to service the community. Humane Society of Westchester, New Rochelle, often gets animals brought to our shelter by someone saying they were found in the Bronx or in Pelham. We believe that some of the dogs said to, to have been found in Pelham may very well have been found in the Bronx. The person who found the animal is reluctant to bring them to the Bronx, believing that the animal's fate there is not good and that they have a much better chance of being adopted at our shelter. Some of these dogs may in fact be owner surrendered, people who cannot keep their dogs, but again, do not want to bring them to the drop-off facility in the Bronx. Humane Society of Westchester does take some of these dogs from the 19 communities in their contact area. People who lost their dog in the Bronx may have no idea to contact the sh shelter in Westchester, which means they may never be reunited with their pet. Those we cannot take may very well become stray, abandoned animals, which is cruel and inhumane. Again, we urge a full service animal shelter be built in the Bronx, a, one which, it, which will relieve overcrowding at other NYC shelters and provide desperately needed services, including an adoption center, low-cost vaccinations, a spay-neuter clinic, and other vital assistance to NYC animals in need. Thank you. Uh, I got 20 seconds. I'll give it to one of these guys. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Deborah Thomas, and I'm a longtime volunteer at the Animal Care. Right. Thank you. I'm I'm Deborah Thomas. I'm a longtime volunteer at the Animal Care Center uh, Manhattan Shelter, and I uh, volunteer there as a cat adoption counselor. Um, I I am here today to speak in support of the plan to build a full service animal shelter in the Bronx. A lot of what I was going to say has been said many times today, so I'll try to cut to the chase. Uh, animal advocates, including myself, have fought for this to take place for a very long time. And a full-service shelter in the Bronx would uh, accommodate cat, dog, and rabbit adoptions, which would uh, lessen the overflow of animals in the Manhattan shelter and would keep the Manhattan uh, animals from getting sick because of overcrowding. Uh, and also, the new shelter would provide jobs to the community, multiple volunteering opportunities, school tours, animal training classes, and other public services to educate the community about animal care and animal issues. I would like to ask Council Member Andy King and the co-op city residents to keep an open mind regarding this issue, because a new animal shelter in their midst would only be an asset, and it would not um, cause animals running on the sidewalks, dirty sidewalks, and all this other stuff that people seem to think is going to happen. Uh, I understand that a community center is wanted, but I want to ask, uh, are there definite plans for a community center? Have funds been approved for a community center? Because there are definite plans for a shelter, and funds have been approved. And the animal-loving community of New York City has fought for full-service shelters for many, many years. And I'd like to urge the City Council to please continue its support of this very important project because many, many four-legged lives are depending on it. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ray Rogers. I live in East Tallum, around the corner from an animal shelter, an animal shelter that is, play, is, is great benefit to our community. 
I believe it's the one that you, you uh, volunteer in. I support transforming 2050 Bartow Avenue into the long-planned and desperately needed full-service animal welfare center. I do not support the shenanigans of First Hartford Realty Corporation to grab this location with a phony claim of wanting to build affordable housing, which might include a community center. In June, AM New York reported that Hartford Realty has spent years paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to influence political decisions made on developing Barton Avenue. This has been explained earlier by some others. In fact, one lobbyist, as mentioned earlier, Patrick Jenkins, was paid $200,000 since 2016, and they have lobbied Council Member King and Bro Bronx Borough President Reuben Diaz Jr. to oppose the Animal Welfare Center. I'd like to know, have Mr. King and Mr. Dias received any campaign contributions from Hartford Realty or any of its lobbyists? Has River Bay or any members of its board received any favors from Hartford Realty or its lobbyists? Animal shelter is not placing animals above people as other people described here. In fact, Animal Center will greatly benefit both people and animals. Seniors, children, people with disabilities particularly benefit from these animals and these animal centers where they can also go, as many people do in my community, take those animals for a walk, pet those animals, visit those animals, help those animals out. And let me tell you something, human beings get more from the animals than we will ever give to them. And lastly, we had some buses brought down, I understand one or two buses from Co-op City to speak out against it. There's 55,000 people in Co-op City. I don't think that was very representative of Co-op City because one of my closest friends in Co-op City said, if I knew about the hearing and there were any buses for me to come down on, I'd come down and be on the other side. And I believe most people in Co-op City have a sense enough to stand up and say, we support this center. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, panel. Looks like we're down to the final panel of the day. Oh, we're not. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Calling up uh, Peter Ortiz, Marie Palladino, Ebony Lewis, and Judy Ross. We'll also call up Linda Mann and Christopher, Christine, I'm sorry. Christine, I cannot read your last name, I apologize. Yanni, Yanni? Is that you? No, I'm Judy Ross. Is there a Christine here? No. Thank you. Then we'll call up, is it Rio? Apolity, yes. Thank you. Since we just have one more, we'll, we'll ask for Susan Blake Nahama as well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you all moved over that way. <laughs> you may begin whenever you're ready. Hi, my name is Peter Ortiz, and I'm happy to be reading this testimony on behalf of the animal rescue organization called The Place for Cats. This testimony is from Mia Lancaster, who's director of Place for Cats. Place for Cats is a 401c3 rescue and adoption organization founded in New York City in 1990. Since 1990, we've rescued and found homes for approximately 1,400 felines. Place, Place for Cats is in, a partner in Mayor's Alliance for New York City Animals and in New Hope, an adjunct organization to the New York City Animal Care Centers. 
Having been in rescue for decades, I can attest to the vast number of stray cats in the Bronx. Every week we get calls from people in the Bronx who find strays in their yard or on the street and want us to come get them. Based in Manhattan, we are a tiny group and we are not able to accommodate the huge number of cats in need that inhabit the Bronx about whom we receive calls from concerned citizens. Many of these citizens would like to do the right thing, but due to time, distance, or age, cannot easily travel with the stray animal down to Manhattan to surrender the found animal. The Bronx is in dire need of its own shelter, a real facility and not a way station, where Bronx residents would have the option to pick up that stray found in their yard or on the street and transport it locally to the nearby shelter instead of calling small rescue groups scattered in other boroughs, hoping that one of us small groups would have the resources to travel and collect animals seen on the streets in a, local dis in a location distant from our base. The Bronx desperately needs its own shelter. Will you please help to see that it gets one? Thank you for your time and, uh, oh, five seconds. <laughs> Susan Blake Nahama. I live in Community District 10, very close to Co-op City. I am not an animal activist, but let me tell you what goes on in our neighborhood on Pelham Parkway. Um, I live right by Mount Sinai Hospital to give people a geographical area. Um, it is full of feral cats. I mean, every day. Um, I talked about getting injured. This MRI was from walking my dog. and. Another feral cat came by, and these are not, people don't own these um, uh, pets. And what we have to, what people do in the neighborhood, when kittens are born, we have to call outside um, non-profit non, um, organizations to come capture those cats, but they can't do it all. They can't capture every feral cat. And my neighborhood, I would say there's at least 40 or 50 of them living in it near Pelham Parkway. I understand people are upset about the noise. I live near a hospital. 20 ambulances come by a day. Um, we have people who uh, litter um, the Pelham Parkway, which I live on, nonstop diapers, beer bottles. Unfortunately, that's a part of living with the Bronx, as long with, ba with bad pa transportation. But it is needed. I live there. And I was just uh, curious, Councilman King, has anyone done a census of the uh, number of pets that do live in Co-op City? Okay, I was just curious because I see them. I shop at the um, stop and shop there, and I do see people walking their dogs and stuff when I am there. And people are talking about the central park, um, the central section of the Bronx as a solution. Park Chester is in the central. They don't allow dogs in their condo complexes either. So I don't understand how Co-op City residents are um, arguing to them to. Uh, put a shelter in an area that's going to have the same arguments they are. That's all I have to say. I'm just a resident. That's what goes on in my neighborhood. I'm not an activist. Uh, my name is Ebony Lewis. Um, I'm a founder of My Pitbull's Keeper. Um, I actually live in the Bronx right by the Park Chester area, and I founded My Pitbull's Keeper to educate the public and help bring training services to the Bronx community. I'm 21 years old and I have over 100 clients so far. And I've worked with these Bronx dogs day in and day out. I go to school full time, I'm in college, and I can tell you what these dogs go through. This shelter is needed. This shelter is needed. Like, I cannot explain to you. I have set up with my foundation, I have set up youth programs, I have set up kids programs, dog safety talks. I do all this by myself. New York City can do this when a 21-year-old is doing this. <laughs> Y'all can do this. Um, and on the other note, they all left. They all left, but I lived in the Bronx. I grew, there, grew up there, I grew up in Long Island as well. And I was in high school, middle school, all that. My parents put me all through youth programs, library programs, sports, and yeah, I did good. I'm a three-peat champion in track, but I also was running the streets. And the only thing that stopped me from running the streets was because I got a mentor in dog training. And from that time on, I never touched the streets again because of dogs. And that is it. Because of these dogs, 
I grew up in life. I went to college, I graduated, I am now going to school to become a professional dog trainer, but I'm already doing dog training. I already started my business, like I said, I already started my Pitbull's Keeper, where we bring hay rides. We have hay rides all month, right in Parkchester. We, use, we utilize Bronx parks, and we bring sporting events, we bring talks, youth programs, dog training to these communities. I can't do this by myself. So an animal shelter would help a lot not another condo place. Thank you. I think I would have heard her a lot better without the celebration, so I'm gonna ask again to please refrain from the clapping and all of that. And um, for you, I just wanna commend you for your testimony today. I think you're the youngest entre entrepreneur that we've seen today. So <laughs> I commend you. you for all of your good work and, and, and please do keep it up. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony today, Ebony. And a very hard act to follow, I will say. <laughs> But good afternoon. I am here to speak on behalf of the, of the thousands of homeless animals and beloved pets and urge the City Council to support the Bartow Avenue Bronx Shelter proposal. This full service shelter will not only help the animals, but will help the people of the Bronx who love them by providing much needed resources, such as low cost vaccinations, wellness checks, free dog training, and one of the most important things, spay neuter clinics. The opposition says, that they are putting people before animals. I say that this carefully chosen shelter puts people alongside their animals and allows for the Bronx community to join in the historic legislation mandating that every borough have a full service animal shelter operational by 2024. The Bartow Avenue Bronx shelter will accomplish this and accomplishes something else as well. Sometimes it is also about what increases our humanity as a city. This is most certainly one of those cases. Thank you, and I would like to thank Chairperson Adams and the Council for your attention to all of us. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Judy Ross of 843 Forest Avenue in the Bronx, and I've also um, been a long time a long time volunteer of, of Bronx-based rescue groups where I answer emails and telephone calls. And I have to say, one of the most frequent questions I get is, how can I volunteer? There is a real need for um, a strong desire for people in the community who can't have pets of their own because of some financial restrictions or property restrictions where they live <laughs> to want to interact with, uh, with give back and, and love animals. And I think uh, the co-op city kept saying that they don't allow pets, um, which is interesting because I will, I would say that there are probably lots of kids in that 50,000 community who would really appreciate the advantage, the uh, opportunity to interact with animals in their neighborhood. So um, I would really uh, strongly uh, <laughs> say yes to this shelter and that location. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Rio Polity. I um, am a volunteer and a New Yorker. I want to uh, start off by thanking the committee for, uh, I want to give my thanks and appreciation to the both of you for giving us the opportunity to speak, staying so long to listen to all of our voices and making sure that we're all heard with your open ears and open minds as well. Uh, we spoke about respect, yet I only now, after missing over an hour, welcome Andy King back to the discussion. Um, I'm here today to show my support for the building of the much-needed animal shelter in the Bronx. For the past two years, I have watched our current administration put the frivolous wants of the rich above the fundamental rights of the poor. I have listened to the false promises spouted from the lips of politicians until they no longer bothered to veil their lies at all. Our voices, nay, our pleas, have fallen on deaf ears, but I stand before you now to make this declaration. I am mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. The topic of a golf course keeps getting brought up, yet it was not approved. That's the end of that discussion. I publicly call on Andy King to answer his constituents rather than the lobbyist fees lining his pockets. Taking a $200,000 lobbyist fees from real estate lobbyists, Andy King is denying the Bronx something that they desperately need. Reclaiming my time. 
uh, something that they desperately need, a shelter that would help thousands of animals annually, 100 permanent jobs to the, an uh, to the neighborhood, a youth outreach program, a senior citizen program, and an opportunity to help the residents of the Bronx, those who line up around the blocks to wait for affordable veterinary care just to be denied because of overcrowding and lack of resources. Uh, you swore an oath as a public servant to serve the needs of your citizens. So hear us as our message is very clear. We are overdue for a shelter in this area of the Bronx and we will not wait another three years for another 50 sites to be surveyed. This land might be your land, but this land is also my land. To embody the meaning of Woody Guthrie's famous words, this land is our land and we demand it for the people and animals of the Bronx. Thank you. Thank you very much, panelists. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Councilor Kennedy, did you have any? Wait, can I answer his question? You had a question uh, earlier. Our, our panel is done, so we're going to ask you to step down. <sighs> Councilmember King does have um, final remarks, and then I will make mine. But thank you so much, panel. First, I just want to thank everyone who came out this afternoon to give their thoughts, their conversations, their ideas, and their opinions on the proposed site to build an animal shelter off of Bartow Avenue. While this conversation is very spirit, I'd ask us all to stay within the spirit of the goal of the law, and that is to accomplish building an animal shelter in every borough. That means us having true conversations to figure out how do we deliver on the law, not spinning truths, making up new truths, uh, as someone told me to uh, alter alternative facts to the conversation. We have a commitment in the council to deliver on animal shelter in the Bronx, whether it's on Bartow Avenue or whether it's any place else. Our goal is to accomplish that and stay in compliance with the law. So I thank everyone again, regardless where you live in the borough of the Bronx or the city of New York. New York is one that we ask everyone to participate in this democracy, which we offer here at City Hall. But I ask us all to be respectful and true in any of conversations so we don't mislead ourselves and mislead others that can confuse the agenda to deliver on this animal shelter in the borough of the Bronx. That all being said, I want to thank you, Madam Chair, for hosting today's conversation, and we're looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Council Member King. Just want to thank everyone who stayed these past many hours today to hear this very important hearing on this very important subject. You stuck it out with us. We appreciate it. Want to make sure that everyone has been heard. Is there any other member of the public who wished to testify on this item but did not have an opportunity today? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on LU 231 and it will be laid over. This concludes our public hearings for today. I want to thank the members of the public, all of you once again, for being here today, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.